Yo, Al, I'm be honest with you, bro. I had a weird feeling, dog, and I need people to DM this guy right now that I'm about to talk about. We need to have him on a podcast, have a conversation. <laughs> Our guys already knows what I'm talking about. I'm watching Cobra Kai, and there's this fine ass little boy in that fucking show, bro. Wait, 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 <laughs> Baby, hey, yo, oh, oh. <laughs> there is, there is in the fucking, there is in the show. No, 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 no. Yeah, we are leaving this all in. <laughs> he bailed me. He that bailed was me. so trash. I'm talking about his joke. Oh, his joke. <laughs> now, don't cut that out. Leave nah, that shit in. Nah, you need to feel it. that. Feel Mark that. <laughs> <laughs> Let him feel it. Okay, ready? <laughs> <laughs> Should we rewind right now? Nah, Run nah. it back in the Keep edit. Going. Nah, going. Going. No, no, no. Meaning, I'm saying in the edit, I want you to repeat the joke. <laughs> Again oh. for everybody listening. Nah, that's messed up. That's okay. messed up. So, I'm watching Cobra Kai. All right. Okay? Yep. We already talked about this. Okay? There's this actor. <laughs> I wasn't as on board. I know. <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't, don't leave me now. <laughs> don't leave me now. I don't know why you're leaving me in there. I got, I got, I got, don't leave me now. Okay? <laughs> Yo, Yo, listen. This player one right now. Please, <laughs> please look at how old this this <laughs> fine ass human being is. Yo. Hey, hey, just go to the IMDb page and see if you could guess who we're talking about. No, 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 no. All just right. look so. how old he is. Not Miguel. Oh. That little white boy. Look at how old, how old that little white boy, Robbie. How old is he? Just make sure he's over eighteen. Wait, his name's Robbie. No, his character's name is Robbie in the show. Son. The Cobra oh, Kai is the name of the show. Tanner Buchanan. Look how old he is. Okay? I need to know this before this I continue is, this. this. Is tense. How old? 21. Knew that <laughs> motherfucker was legal. I knew he was legal. Now come get this sexual harassment. Alright? Let me hey. tell you. This little Topanga looking motherfucker <laughs> out here. Alright? This man, this dude made me feel weird, bro. The first scene, he got this little bob haircut. Yeah. Okay? Perfect, straight, thick, luscious hair. This dude? Thick, like that dude right there. Son, Mark just set your ass up. He just turned 18. No. Son, no, he's February 21. 4th, 2002. Bro, I just, I looked this shit up right here. Mark, Yo, Mark just set you up. It's motherfucking barely legal, son. Bro, what is he? How old is he? It says 21 on Wikipedia. 21, Wikipedia. That's what we going with, all right? All right. Okay, <laughs> stop. I just showed you this. Stop dude, you looking say, up barelylegal.com for fucking information, bro. You always want that shit to be turning 18. I just 18. showed him this dude. He said, yeah. That's the character, motherfucker. The character, God you damn. idiot. You fucking retard. <laughs> hold on. Yo, hold on. Hold what on. You hold on. <laughs> this motherfucker. Oh, the character yo, in the show. Guy, yo, this guy just. <laughs> yo, how old is Wolverine? Yo, Wolverine's <laughs> technically 233 because you age faster when you recover. I'll take it. I'll take it. Hey, nah, I'm sorry. switching cameras nah, nah, out nah, here. Nah, I'm monitoring nah, order nah, the audio. Nah, if nobody I miss this shit, nah. nobody asks you to nah, age. Nah, okay? If I miss Listen, that, that's all good. Guy, Whatever. I'm guy. looking quick. I'm Googling yo, quick, guys. This guy right here, son. I got it. Yo, this is hilarious. It got his whole family in the bio. Don't take it away. <laughs> He's got his whole family in his bio. <laughs> his, his teacher is Danny LaRusso. You don't recognize those names. Come on, bro. I don't know, man. <laughs> Love interest, Samantha LaRusso. Anyway, back to what I'm saying, okay? This kid shows up, first scene. Yeah. Got this little bob haircut. Yeah. Mad feminine, yeah. mad Topanga. Yeah, looking like a prettier Mark. <laughs> looking like a pretty nah, you don't look like Mark, bro. Come when on, you bro. said that, that shit made me feel uncomfortable. Come on, That's bro. What I'm saying, that, Cause yeah. I was I was bringing to the table how cute that motherfucker was. So this is what happened. The other day we're at the table just discussing the show. <laughs> shit felt mad weird. So we're at the table discussing the show, right? I'm like, yo, I'm watching this Cobra Kai. Is, I was like, let me tell you, this is one character on that show, and then out of nowhere, Akash goes, yeah, the cute one, and I'm about to be like, yeah, that motherfucker, <laughs> and then Akash goes, the motherfucker look just like Mark, and I was like, eh! <laughs> <laughs> hey, looking on, like bro. Mark, bro, that's Mark ain't me. got that's no Mark. fucking hey, collarbones like that, look at that kid's collarbones, bro. That's Mark. That's Mark. <laughs> Son, look at that kid. That's son, a female, son, that's bro. A, that's son, Mark, that yo. is that's Mark, That is Mark, son. Where's J.K. Rowling? You got a crush on Mark, <laughs> oh, Where's J.K. Rowling, son? 
Ooh. Nah, you ain't got it like that, bro. You ain't got it like that. First of all, first of all, you know what though? Look at that brow. Look at that brow. He got a normal ass brow. No, he's not normal. It's kind of froze. If that was Mark, there'd be a shadow on his shoulder blades right now. You know, damn bro, that's not fucking Mark, Alex. Okay, look how he's looking up in the air. Mark, look smoldering right now because this little motherfucker be looking smoldering. I'm not feeling comfortable with this, bro. I'm not feeling comfortable. Serve him. Oh, son, that's dude. Mark, son. son. That's wild, right? Cross your arms Mark. a little bit. Hold on now. Maybe it is. Cross <laughs> your arms a little bit. Oh, shit, bro. Oh, shit. What's your little cute ass? Mm. Yo, what y'all son, doing all these late nights, Mark, right? bro, you yeah. just got a raise out of hey, my pants, bro. You just got a raise. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that harassment? <laughs> anyway. Oh, my God. Point is, this motherfucker right here looks feminine. Does he not? Look at the haircut. All right. He's 21. This is look turn at the haircut. I think, me. I think you just want to fuck him, so you try to make him look feminine. All I know is the first scene that I saw, Yeah. this is what happens. I'm watching with my girl, and we're watching the show, and he pops up, and I literally, I literally go like this. I go, I go. <laughs> Son. Hold on. I'm, I'm worried scene, about where this is going. The right first now. scene I saw, the first time he pops up on this, Screen, right? He's all like, he's all like a little confused, like <laughs> little deer in headlights, little look. And I just go, I just go, yeah, I, man, come on, yo, what's the story? Hey, yo. <laughs> My body didn't know what to do. <laughs> so my body didn't know what to do. Because oh, I was like, wow, I couldn't explain it, bro. Oh, I felt like J.K. Rowling. That's why she that's why she ran those books. <laughs> Wait, why? Little tranny kid right here making you feel weird. <laughs> so, that book. Not it's the Harry easy. Potter book. Why? What? <laughs> what? Why Avina Kadabra, bro. Get the fuck out of here. I had enough of this kid. Oh my god. God damn. You can't deny he's objectively. Cute for a boy. <laughs> oh, wow. He is trying to get you <laughs> in that. Dangalang is really she trying to be cute. Like she's just like, she's like, give me that dangalang. <laughs> <laughs> I support y'all's relationship, man. What do y'all call it? Roti that or something? Dick. What, <laughs> what do y'all call it? Give me that paneer, yo. <laughs> that paneer? Yeah, no. No, for real. What does she say when she wants some of that dick? She's trying to be cute with it. Probably trying to be cute with yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think she tries to be cute with it. <laughs> Well, what do you when she's trying to be sexy? Whatever, like, <laughs> what y'all want? In the black, in the black community, we say dick. So you say, "Yo, give me that dick." That's right. Yo, yeah, that's that's very uh, set the mood. You know what I mean? Like, Daniel Lang ain't setting the mood. I know. Dang she sounds like a toy, son. Nobody on. Yo, here's like, the thing. Dang Lang sounds like cute yeah, little yeah, Dang Lang. Yeah, yeah. Son, that's low key disrespectful. Dang Lang's like, dangling, it's dangling, bro. No, it's, it's fucking like dangling. No, dingling, dingling is little. That'd be a little dingling. It's not that different. That's what they call Asians. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually the song. Dingling, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it's just two Asian twins, dingling. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. But dangling, that fucking. Dang lang, that that's dangle, huh? So is he saying that while y'all are in it too? Like, oh yeah, that dangling. <laughs> Mark that fucking time right there. Hold on, why? hold on. Yo, that's how we start, start the podcast. The oh, okay. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Mark that. That's fire. All right, oh my that's God. right. Y'all gonna figure out what part of the podcast that's at. <laughs> anyway, no, she doesn't say it while it's in. While it's in, <laughs> while it's in, she be, you know what I mean? Dangling, it's so deep inside me. <laughs> while it's in, she be looking at my face to what? see how far I think I'm in there and then reacting based on that. Uh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if I'm like, all the way, she's like, ah. <laughs> Ooch. Oh, my goodness. Nah, for real, I don't know what she calls my dick when it's in there. Dick? Does she, does she have to say it, though? I don't know. Maybe she doesn't. <laughs> we talking dirty a little bit, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'll dirty talk, bro. I'll dirty talk. I will fucking dirty talk, bro. I dirty it's, I'm filthy. I can't even. Imagine. I'm filthy, Taylor. I can't imagine. What I do you think? Feel like if you're go if you're if you like her saying dangling, I yeah. can only imagine <laughs> I don't what know. you're saying about like, oh, give me that teacup. Like I feel yeah. like you don't be 
Na, na, abi ay kimi ay kukuli lukuli. Put my dangling in your toy toy. <laughs> yeah, yo, real what? talk. Whoa. So yo, now that we have dogs, bro, I think my sex talk has been like switched up a little bit. Because I think I'll go into more doggy. Yeah, somebody <laughs> wants some dick. Oh. <laughs> have you been a good girl? <laughs> Cookie, come. 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 Good Sit. girl. Sit. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> Don't move. It's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, this weekend I watched The Social Dilemma, okay? Akash, you did not watch The Social not. Dilemma. Um, Alex, you saw it? Yeah. Mark, you see it? Yep. Taylor, have you seen The Social Dilemma? You should watch it. Everybody at home, it's on Netflix. Very interesting, uh, fatalist look at um, social media, social media platforms, and their like manipulation of like the human psyche to force you into you know spending hours and hours of your time watching social media and the role they play in the divisiveness uh, in our country right now and fake news, et cetera. And it's got this like horrible approach to social media. And I cannot sit here and hate on this documentary, Alex. Because that same algorithm that they're trashing is the reason why I have a career. Mm. It's the reason why we have this studio. Okay. It's the reason why people are watching this right now. So the algorithm, they're looking at this algorithm like all it does is feed you this horrible shit and like what yeah, yeah, your yeah. worst possible nightmare and feed into your fears and yeah. there's nothing fact checked. And yes, of course, it's all right. But at the same time, like, it, and they're, they're making all these points about like all you're doing is um, spending hours upon hours on the internet, mm -hmm. right? All day, you're wasting your time. It's like, yeah, we can do that because the internet has made our lives so easy. That's a good point. Do you know what I'm saying? We can look at our phone for four hours because I don't have to go to the store to pick up groceries. I just type it in my phone and then they bring it to me. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't have to wait online at a movie theater. I just watch it on, on home on Netflix. I don't have to do anything. I don't even have to, for places like reservations and all this kind of stuff, I guess you can call up and make reservations back in the day, but it's just so simple to do absolutely everything. We have tons of extra time just stare at our phone. Now, I'm not saying we should, Okay. But the last thing you're going to see is me come out, a content creator and podcaster, and tell people not to look at their phones. Mm -hmm. Can I say this? The one thing I did see, the guy's name? Stop talking. <laughs> you didn't watch the fucking documentary. No, that's a valid point. Stop your fucking talking. What do you mean? That's a valid point. There's no facts. Fuck it. Go. All yeah, right, that's go. a valid point. The guy's name? Tristan? Yo, when he a... corrects the bitch who says Tristan, he's like, Tristan. Thank oh, you. yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm out. That, that was good. Fuck that, that good. guy. Yeah, Fuck yeah, that yeah. guy through and through. <laughs> Nothing you say is valid. And also, it kind of feels like a bunch of people got fired from these social media platforms. They're now like, social media is bad. <laughs> like, it's literally all the guys that made social media so bad now going, oh, by the way, it's bad. Yeah. By the way, I'm not making any money off of it anymore, so yeah. I just want to let you know it's bad. It's from, the, from their mansion? From their fucking mansion. <laughs> so let me find yeah. a way to make money off of how it's bad. Dude, it's the confessions of an economic hitman. Yeah, exactly. Right? They're the guy who literally worked for America, destabilizing third world countries so we yeah. could take advantage of them, stopped doing it, and then wrote a book about how fucked up it was. The guy who wrote the book The Game, remember that guy? His yeah. name is Neil Strauss, yeah. the nerd to learn how to get pussy, yep. and he wrote a book about it. <laughs> oh, Great yeah. read, okay? Yeah. You know what he did? He got a girl and he wrote another book about how important it is not to just fuck random bitches and get a girlfriend. Hmm. These motherfuckers are literally giving you AIDS and then giving you the cure. Hmm. Hmm. No it's, cure for AIDS. Say again? No cure for AIDS, but keep You going. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like It's like, don't be a part of the problem and then act like you're part of the solution and want some pats on the fucking back. But now yeah. what do you do though? So if you are part of the problem, what's the solution? If you are part of the problem and you don't stop yourself, Mm -hmm. Like you get stopped, the company's like, yo, you're not really good at this shit no more, peace. Then you're bitching about it, right. get out of here. Right. But if you realize what you're creating and then you go, I don't feel like I want to be part of this and then you take every action you possibly can to like fix it within the company and then they fire you, then come back. Well, one of the dudes was about that. Which one? Like the one that he's like actually holding conferences about <clears throat> yeah, that's how that bad Tristan. social media That's that yeah, Tristan. Tristan. And he sent that memo out while he was still working at the company like yo this is becoming a problem like, right it's, that's the thing it is a problem he tried but here's the thing it is a problem but it's also we have to understand we are the problem like i hate this zero accountability on like humans part mm. right it's like you choose to watch the video yeah like you have to be able to discern between content and that's something that like older generations don't know how to do as well as younger generations like i was asking mark right i'm like yo when you see a video randomly 
like, what's going on? You see a picture, you see anything like that. Do you have some healthy skepticism about it? And he goes, oh, yeah, of course. Like, because I know how much fake shit exists there. Like, my whole life I grew up with people had, like, filters and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. If I show my girlfriend or you show your girlfriend a picture of a beautiful woman, what's the first thing she does? Uh, trash them. And start to tell you what's... What's fake. Yeah. So the younger generation is observing content through the lens of, man, this is fucked up, this ain't real, this is a conspiracy, this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. The older generation, the boomers, are consuming content on Facebook. All of our parents are on Facebook consuming content like, oh my God, the world's on fire, everything's going wrong, this is horrible, mm -hmm. because they grew up trusting everything they saw. So I don't know if this is that much of a problem for kids. I know they're like, suicides are up, and this, that, the other, and it's just like... I don't know. Maybe people weren't suiciding that much back in the day, right? Like, I don't know what to tell you. Suicides are up by how much? Yeah, it, was, it was quite a bit. 100%. The, the, the stats that they put in that shit, it was up quite a bit. But there's nothing else that that's due to? I mean, I mean it was only since, like, 2010 when, like, social media really blew up. Hmm. Oh, you know what's probably due to? The fact that there's way more ways to commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Can't commit no suicide back in the day. What you mean? What do you? Th when do you think pills guns were invented? When yeah, do you when, think when, pills when, were invented? <laughs> pills came out like '93. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they came out with the. It was all it? yeah. It was Flintstone gummies, and then it was. It was pills. Flintstone gummies. <laughs> right, they right, had right. the fire Air Maxes, right, yeah. and then they came out with the pills, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, you yeah, could yeah, OD on the pills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. about the Jordan Nines. Yeah, it was right when the Jordan Nines came out. They came out with them pills. So. No, in all seriousness, obviously there's negative side. I'm not, I'm not acting like there's no side effects. The same thing with like um, environmentalism. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, yes, of course we should care about the environment, mm -hmm. but the fatalist attitude towards the environment, like, oh my God, we have 10 more years left. The planet's going on fire. We're all right. fucking done. Mm -hmm. Is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the person, the lack of personal accountability when it comes to the internet, you should be able to not watch shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, don't watch it. If it's bad, you don't like your feed, that's your fault. Yep. Like, real I, talk. I have no problem with the algorithm. I think it's it makes our life enjoyable whenever we pick up our phone. Because mm -hmm. it's like, it's showing me shit that I already like. I don't have to go searching for it anymore. Yep. And now it's on you. You have your own accountability to put your phone down. Exactly. So it's like, if it's a kid, if it's happening to a kid, it's the parents. Hey, you have to control their phone time. And get them like to build that muscle of being able to control it themselves. Mm -hmm. And as an adult, you have no fucking excuse. And it's, also, say, sorry, go. It's different though. Young kids are like, that's all that quiets them down is yeah. the fucking laptop and the internet. Nah. That's it. I'm not hearing that excuse. I, see, I know it's tough for you to some, imagine a life with kids. <laughs> but, nah, but I it's do a see thing. It. I see young kids, I see parents that raise their children with no screen time and they find things to do. Like I was, these little ass kids are like fucking playing soccer and they look like five. So it's like you can do other things. Go the fuck outside and do other stuff. You don't need to just sit them in front of a screen. It doesn't have to be too extremes. You can like let them use the screen just and let them control. use the iPad and then also take it away. It's like we do that with every single thing. Well, I know we had to have that done to us. With video games. With, uh, video games, TV, all that shit was yeah. just gamified to try to keep you tuned in as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. They've just kind of perfected the, the system and that's a little scary to us, which I get. But yeah, it's, it's I, been happening since, you know, the It's been happening for a minute. But there is something really important that I hope people start to understand. It's like, Teaching kids to have a certain expectation, and not even kids, fucking adults, to have a certain expectation about the information that they digest. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, when we were young, we would go to the newspaper stand with our pops or our moms, right? Mm -hmm. You'd go to the newspaper stand, there'd be a New York Times, there'd be a Washington Post, there'd be a Daily News, and there'd be a National Enquirer, right? And you look at the National Enquirer, you start reading it, and then your dad would be like, oh, that's all bullshit, that's fake, don't trust anything. Mm -hmm. So now in the future, when I see a headline from the National Enquirer, I'm going, oh, that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to trust that. Yeah. Right? Now I'm not saying it can't be right, but my pop set an expectation yeah. for what is right or wrong. And if you're on the internet, you got to tell your kids the same shit and tell our fucking old ass parents the same thing. Just because you see a video with a ticker at the bottom don't mm -hmm. mean it's a legit news source. Yeah. You know what I mean? My mom out here sending me 5G conspiracies and I got to explain what the fuck 5G. You on 3G. You got the old <laughs> iPhone. You got two more Gs you don't got to worry about. So now the only scary part is like the generation that falls right under that. So the ones that are old enough that they get tricked by this shit yep. and then they have little kids who are impressionable by the parents that, who are raising them yes because so, now there's no filter yeah exactly now the kids are consuming everything the parents are consuming they're believing now you got a thing. dad who believes the national Enquirer. Yeah. yes yeah. 100% don't get me wrong there is a problem and we will find solutions for it but the idea that this documentary is pushing forward was essentially like 
we got to stop the algorithm. The algorithm has already gone too far. Mm. This at the end. It's like that same algorithm is teaching me everything I know about like the world. I want to research philosophers. I look it up on YouTube. I check it out. I want to learn about like boxers. I want to learn about like fights. Everything I'm getting. You know what else is interesting? Who releases documentary? Netflix. What does Netflix use constantly to get you to watch oh, the it? Algorithm. algorithm. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second and pay some bills. Make sure them dicks are hard. That's right, hard dicks. We're not playing games out here, okay? This is flagrant too. We're not having no floppy dangalangs, okay? Straight to the sky. Touch your chin. Blue chew. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. Rest your chin on it. Real talk. What should I get to eat today? That's what you should be like. <laughs> okay? I mean it. All right? Blue chew. We're not playing games over here, man. I'm telling you, ladies, if you're listening, you deserve the hard dick too. Make sure your man gets her to get it for him as a little gift. Make sure you guys have the weekend of your life. Same active ingredient that's in Cialis, Viagra, all that stuff. Okay? But this is the chew. So it's different. Chew that up and get to work, okay? We're going to make sure everybody get hard dick for free. All you got to mm. do, all you got to do is go to bluechew.com, use the promo code flagrant. Bluechew.com, use the promo code flagrant, okay? You can get that hard dick for free. Get that free trial. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. That's it. Hardest dick of your life. Satisfy your wife. $5? That's a no-brainer. Bluechew.com. Flagrant is the promo code. Go handle that. Let's get back to the show. Yo, guys, I got another show date. They are trickling in because Corona's ruining everything. But Minneapolis, Minnesota, I'm going to be at Acme Comedy Club October 21st through the 24th. Limited capacity. Everybody's going to be safe, socially distanced. Bring that ass through. Let's have fun. Let's come laugh at the ill shit we're going through. October 21st through 24th. Tickets available on my website, akashsing.com. Or you can go to the Acme Comedy Club web website. We'll see you guys there. Now let's get back to the show. What up, people? Look, I'm recording this after the podcast because I forgot to introduce our illustrious guest, Amin El Hassan. He is with us once again. We love him. Great guy. Now, here's the deal. We just got into the convo, so I want to give you all some context. Here's the context. I'm explaining to Amin why Bill Gates will never be remembered. Now you know. Take it away, Alex. Have you heard of Microsoft? Yeah, we've heard of it, but this is the point that I've always made. Like, no one will ever remember anything that Bill Gates did. <laughs> Windows? Shut the fuck. <laughs> Nobody used Windows. Windows, you you look out of. Windows is nothing you do on the internet. Nothing you do on your computer. Windows? Xbox? Xbox, they'll remember him <laughs> before. Honestly, I Zoom? forgot that shit was part of Microsoft. <laughs> Zoom ain't him. Zoom is some Chinese dude Z in San Jose. Zoom with an N. What's that? You don't remember Zoom? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I had a Zoom. It's, not, it's a not iPod. <laughs> What? It's a it, not Zoom iPod. Was Microsoft's iPod. See, trash. Motherfucker sucks. Bro. That shit had a radio on it too. Nah, Remember that I shit? Had a, FM, Zoom, yeah. had a FM radio on it. I love my Zoom. <laughs> Nobody's remembering Gates, bro. That's why he's trying to fix the world. He's nah, like, I man. need to do something so people remember me. You wildin', man. Oh, Michael. Name one thing you can remember the Gates just for. Said what Xbox. you gonna tell your kids about Gates? Xbox. It's Xbox, not Microsoft. Xbox is Xbox. It's just Xbox. It's not oh, Microsoft man. Xbox. It's just Xbox. Oh. Apple is Apple, bro. We're going to remember that turtleneck fuck for a long goddamn time, bro. <laughs> We're going to remember every single thing he did. Your iPhone, I, in the front of it. Xbox. That's not Microsoft. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> and that's not Bill Gates, dog. <laughs> Bill Gates probably left the company by then. Did Bill Gates leave the no, company by the time? He did. He was no, done. he didn't. He did. He's probably trying to shoot up fucking Indian kids full of vaccines. That's what he was busy hey, doing. Hey, you know what? We appreciate it. Do you? We can use some vaccines. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take malaria pills still when I go out there. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. But that's not because of Indians. That's because of mosquitoes out there. Yeah. Where do you think mosquitoes are from? Africa. Oh. Oh, shit. Yeah, y'all would do some shit like that to us. To, I was trying to... Uh. What? <laughs> Where are they from? India. <laughs> Wait, are they from India? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is once they get over here, they just chilling, bro. It's crazy, though, man, because I caught malaria when I when I was in Sudan. And, I, like, remember, I was texting with you. And you went back. During the whole chloroquine, like, chloroquine, thing. Chloroquine, yeah. Or whatever, Hydrochloroquine, yeah. Hydrochloroquine, yeah. Yeah, like... Hydroxychloroquine. I, I've taken those pills. I've taken those pills. And it worked for you? Yeah, I mean, they fucking sucks. Like, you hallucinate and shit like that but like it worked 
That sounds right. kind of lit, actually. Yeah. Hallucinating Sick. and not getting malaria. So you got <laughs> malaria? That's the most oh, yeah. third world shit. I've I thought ever you know. Seen, no, the most third world shit is I didn't most know. Most third world shit is your haircut during. Quarantine. <laughs> That's the most third world shit. This is way too first world, dude. This you look pretty, bro. Yeah, it's a very developed haircut. Very oh, yeah, developed. Yeah. This is first world hair. You sold out. I mean, you really what? did. You sold out because I got a haircut. Yeah, I man. need that old yeah. struggle cut that you were working at. Yeah, back Sudanese. There. Hell yeah. yeah! You don't even need a passport. No, you just show up with your The people who criticize me the most were Sudanese people. What they? Say. I would get random Sunni people. You look too say, authentic. No, they were saying like, <laughs> you're, you're a bad representation of who we are. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? You like, act like I was wearing a flag. <laughs> I'm making these videos. I know <laughs> what the flag looks like because of your thing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, well, not because of you, but you had yeah. a horrible thing happen yeah. and people fronted like they cared with your flag on their Instagram. Did people care? No, but they put their little turquoise flag on. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, the yeah. okay. Turquoise. Right? Uh, Something the, like that. The, the color, the color blue, yeah. What is it? <laughs> What color blue? It's like it's uh, like blue seventeen or like they have an actual technical name for it. I don't know. Look it up. Oh my god, man! We gotta teach motherfuckers how to make flags, bro. Oh no! I mean, like the flag is cool, but it's lit. Yeah, I like our flag. Our flag is dope. Our old flag. That's what that blue is based off. The blue, yellow, green. That was the old Sudanese flag, and then mm-hmm. they switched to this generic bullshit. Like you don't fuck with. Yeah, I'm just like, it makes us look like every other North African country. They all have the same fucking I got a feeling politics. you're going back one day, bro. I think you're going to be in Sudan? politics in Sudan, bro. No, I, I got a it. feeling, dog. I can't do it. I, ha- I have this conversation all the time with Sudanese people. I'm like, I can't go. I can't. I don't have the patience because everything in Sudan is according to a certain mentality. Like things like. Punct- what type What type of mentality is that? A Sudanese mentality. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're well, like they're always late. But beyond <laughs> always late. Like, like you have on to have some, malaria or? Yeah, it was like a prereq, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's just things like, things like, for instance, if we go out, we all get just, dinner, right? Right, right, right. And the bill comes and right. I'm broke. Yeah. And everybody knows I'm broke. I'm still expected to do this big, no, no, I swear. No, I got it. No, 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 no. I go, no, I'm, and like, we'll do this whole fight. That's thing. why you can't go back? No. <laughs> People are polite. No, no. This is, this is, this is very, listen, this is actually good. This is actually refreshing. So um, what you're doing is you're going to a third world country mm-hmm. and you're recognizing the problems with it. <laughs> mm-hmm after being from a first world country, and you're going, I need to switch it to be more first world. And this is what white people did around the world. So (laughs) you have to understand, (laughs) you have to understand where we were coming from. You know what I mean? We just went to these different countries. We had a dinner and they're like, what's all this fighting about who's going to pay for it? You don't even have shoes on. God, we got the country now, right? (laughs) That's that's how it works. This is colonization. It comes from a good place. It comes from a good place. It's fucked up on the way there. But you have to admit, it comes from a good place. Yeah, and then on the way back, they're like, hey, you want to ride back? I'm, I'm going this way. <laughs> I'm going, hey, hey it's just good. Do me a favor, put these on. It's like a seatbelt. Just put it on your yeah. wrist. <laughs> Listen, you're already going to pick shit up here. <laughs> you know, like, what are you going to do? You're going to pick shit up? Now you're going to pick shit up over there. Right? You think that was the... You know the pitch. Yo, someone told me they didn't me, take anyone from Sudan. It was yo, always West. It was West no, Africa. West Africa. I yeah, no, Sudan was different. Now they're doing it in Sudan. Yeah, I don't. Now think, there's a slave trade. I right? don't. I don't think the slave trade ever stopped. So there was a slave trade for a minute. The Arabs. Yeah. So like, there's this is the part where Sudanese people get really defensive. Yeah. And they say, well, it's, it was it wasn't slavery like it was here. It's a different kind. I love indentured servitude. Yes, it's no, like oh, this it, is it's so like, funny when people like divide up different types. Yeah, of it's like not yeah the intersectionality of slavery. It was kind of it was a uh, it was more polite. It was like, hey, how you doing? Like, right. hey, uh, do me a favor, can you clean up the yard? I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> and if you said no, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's no, it's did it, they get their farms or whatever afterward though? Because that's different if you get your 40 acres. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Did they promise them 40 acres and a mule no, or anything? No, 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 no. What did they promise? Uh, just say, hey, man, I'll take care of you. It's, it's, it's that really. That is slavery. Uh, no, I'll be honest. honest. That, that, I, know, I know. Indistinguishable. People get real defensive about <laughs> it. I'm like, right. no, that shit ain't different. Like, it's, it's the same thing. Is it like whips and chains and like the sort of brutality that was happening in this country? No, but it's still like. Someone not having the freedom to just, yeah, hey, I'm, I'm out of here. Peace out. Right. And, or, you know, we want to pay me for this or whatever. So right. it's weird, man. But um, to answer the question why I don't think I'm going to go back to be a politician is because it, there's just you're certain there's certain things 100%. you got to be. You could change that as a politician. Nah, you could be like, guys, if you're back. broke, they don't, don't pretend you're going to pay. Wanna, That's a change, law. Man. They don't want to change. You're going to go back, dog. You've experienced it, man. You've lived enough. You why are you trying to kick me out of the country? <laughs> He's on to us, guys. <laughs> we He's saw your old hair. We got we a little suspicious. 
<laughs> Son, you look like you got radicalized for real. Wait, but you're allowed to fly there now because you guys were on the no fly for a minute. That, you you trust that motherfucker? You think like he said like yo, I mean you're cool. I'll fly out. I can come back in. I bet if you were leaving, he wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You could get on. Yeah, yeah, you think that you won't be able to get back? No. I'm, and you haven't gotten your citizenship yet. Nope. Really? No. What is US that about? U.S. citizenship. Yeah. Why the fuck not? Why not just get it? Uh, oh yeah, shit. Let me just go down to CVS and get a U.S. citizenship. I mean, you dude, got a job at ESPN. How hard yeah. can it be to be a citizen? Wait. Harder than that. No, it's not. It's it hard. There's way more U.S. citizens that weren't born here than there are ESPN anchors. That's a good point. You're the first African ESPN anchor. Uh, no. Who? I don't know. You are the first. I don't know. I know I'm the first Sudanese person who ever worked for an NBA team. That's what I I know that for a fact. That's lit, look, yo, you here's something I, do, here's that something that that I want to talk to you about because I know we get to look back and we can look back at these countries in the third world and we could judge them yeah. because they're not up to our standards, but they actually end up doing a lot of great shit that we don't commend them for enough. Did you know that? Okay. <laughs> okay. So He immediately got uncomfortable. Okay. So <laughs> he said, here we go. Thing. In Nigeria, uh -huh. right? Shouts to my Nigerians, Niger. Yeah. You know, I'm just putting the black fist up, but I'm sure you guys probably do something cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do Nigerians do? Does anybody know? What's the Nigerian thing? Taylor falling asleep. Right now. I've never seen Taylor look so sleepy in my beer. fucking life. Get, uh, get TJ from Twitter on the line. Okay, we'll talk to TJ. Alex just did a Wakanda Forever salute. So that <laughs> shows you how cultured he is when it comes to his African quote unquote brothers. Closer than quote. you. Say what? <laughs> I says closer than you. No, I was pretty close. The black fist. Black fist? They got some black fists out there. It's probably. All of rice is basically the closest thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. We fucked with that job. Anyway, point is, they're uh, surgically castrating rapists out there. Yeah. I saw Kinda that. Kind of lit. That's dope. I saw that. And then for child rapists, mm -hmm. murder. I like well, that. It's not murder. Death penalty. It's the death penalty. Yes. Murder is a crime. <laughs> death penalty is That's a punishment. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. <laughs> You're right. You're right about that one. Okay, do okay? I get to stay now? You get to stay now. <laughs> Thank okay. You. I think the argument you just made is one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. And I'm not going to go into <laughs> how you made that type of argument. But still, we will accept it. Point is, I'm looking at this law and I'm like, I love it. Mm -hmm. You castrate these rapists. You murder. You just kill. Sorry. You kill the child rapist. Mm -hmm. Everything's good. And then I start thinking, fuck. That puts a lot of power in the hands of the ladies. Mm -hmm. Oh. I thought, I thought you were going a different way with that. <laughs> no. What if a girl says, the yeah. girl that you break up with, you yeah. cheat on your wife, or you break up with this girl, she don't want you to go out there and fuck other girls. She's like, oh, he raped me. Then they cut your fucking balls off, man. That's, yeah. No, like the whole thing is you just- You see what's happened with Dr. Dre's wife? That shit is- By the way, have you ever seen the letter he wrote her like Yo. in 1995? To get her in the first place. What's he say? Pull that shit up. Because he, she was dating this NBA player named Sadell Threat at the time. And he wrote a dirty Mac of all time letter mm -hmm. saying, hey, I'm filming this music video out here in the desert. It's called California Love. I think it's going to be pretty dope. By the way, why are you still dating that suck ass nigga? Like, and da 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 da, -da And then come here and let the doctor take care of you. It Oy! is the wildest. I, like they have the actual letter, not like typed up. There it is. There it is right there. It's on a handwritten letter. A handwritten letter. Honestly, if you write my girl a letter. <laughs> Yo, so you can have her? Nah, it's not like, my wife, but if we just dating. So blah, it's like the first paragraph. I'm a basketball player? Go yeah. ahead, man. You hand on a letter. You know basketball players can't write neither. <laughs> Yo. Goofy ass handwriting, fingers all big. They can't hold a pen. <laughs> Yo. So, right like this? <laughs> Yo, look at his penmanship. That shit is trash. I can't read. It's too far for me, man. Hopefully you hopefully you doing well and you realize you need to quit fucking with Sidel and come home to your doctor. I will take care of you, baby girl. I'm in Nevada with a hype looking at spots for this new video we're shooting. Can I tell you something very interesting? This is allegedly where Dr. Dre found Burning Man. Keep reading. Keep oh, reading the letter. Really? Keep oh, reading the letter. Now Andrew's okay. interested. So, uh, uh, okay, this new video we were shooting for the single I told oh, you fuck. Pac is going to be on the, uh, is going to be on once, once he is out. out. Why do you read like California Floyd Mayweather? Love. <laughs> 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 so I can't see. You can see that, bro? Yes. I can't see you it. You might need to see a doctor. Yo, make oh, it bigger. Not that doctor. Go back to it. Go back to it. <laughs> make it bigger so Andrew can read better. Please. I really can't read. <laughs> okay here's here's a little bit better now the pressure's on all right 
Ready? Where are we at? Okay, okay. What's that called? California Love. Okay, oh. we met a bunch of crazy naked motherfuckers in the desert today. They were putting up some type of giant wooden man. That's oh, what the fuck shit. I'm talking about. <laughs> so I guess they have a big party here for a bunch of days. I asked them how much how much they pay. They said nothing. I was like, no money? Someone should get behind this shit and make some loot off these fools because they said there'll be at least <laughs> 5,000 people. I think I'll have an office look into it just to see if there's easy money to be had here. Um, was that bout? I'm about, about to, to pass, pass out. I'm about girl. to pass out, girl. Wish I was up in that ass. <laughs> See you back in LA. Oh, that's it. That shit is history. So, Whoa. okay, a couple things are really interesting here. I guess this is the rumor on how Burning uh, Dr. Dre got involved in Burning Man because the, the the rumor was always he was like this silent investor in Burning Man, and I didn't understand how there was any kind of like validity to the rumor. Right. But this is it. This is probably where it got started. Mm. And wow, that's Burning Man at its infancy. So I would say Burning Man was already happening. It was already happening. But he found a way to monetize it. Or exactly. Or explored a way to monetize it. And but, it was always some tech dudes. Yeah? I think it was like all these like- uh, Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tech dudes run Burning Man. Oh, shit. Yeah. So I think this was their way to like decompress. That's I my thought, understanding. It's like I these, literally thought it was just like some but wayward white But that shit was going on people. in 95. Was, I guess the tech bubble was going on back I then. I think maybe so, was, right? Maybe that was the start of it. Maybe. I mean, it was starting like by 98, 99, the dot com thing was going on. So that was. I got to look. I got to look into Windows 95. Been now doing it, so now yeah. it's run by some like tech people. But uh, again, no profitability, but very cool. Okay. And then I said, I wish I was up in that ass. Yeah. That's kind of fire. See you back in LA. And then she comes out. No, the best part is scroll back up to the top. Yeah. You still with that bum ass? <laughs> this is, exactly. so now, yeah, this yeah. is the smoking gun. Come home to your doctor. I will take care of you, baby girl. And okay. that's why his ass right now is, man, like you did it. You said it. You, you did take it. care of her. What do you mean? I know. Yeah, what does this she prove had a great exactly? Life. Does this prove that he was abusive? No. We know he was abusive. He owes her. Why does he owe her? Because he said that in a letter? Yeah, man. If we had to live up to half the shit we were saying to our girls in the beginning of dating when we were trying to date them. Did you put it in print? Say what? Did you put it in writing? In text message? Yo, oh, hold on. Shit, How did man. he not take care of her? No, I'm saying this is it right now. So this letter means I She's will pay using you this $2 million a She's month in a divorce? We're using this shit, dumbass. I'm just saying like- it, This is a terrible argument, Don't be y'all. angry at me because your arguments suck. Don't take that out on me. That's not my fault. Yes, okay? Taylor. Can you please save this man? Okay. Well, no, I can't. I just have a question. Okay, go. Why was he writing her a letter? Like, this is back in the no day. Phones? No, you couldn't he text- <laughs> That's your question. Damn. That's my question. That's a good like question. I don't understand why he's writing it like it's a text message. I'm mad confused. Nah, so, he'll probably have phone out in the desert though. Can I can I ask Taylor a question? Taylor, do you know why people say hang up when they're talking about ending a phone call? I never had someone say hang up. <laughs> you never said he hung up the phone on me. Oh, no. okay, okay, like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh okay. do you know why? Why? Because we used to physically have to hang the hang phone, phone up. How racist is that? <laughs> <laughs> How racist is but that's, that? Like bro? it's crazy. That that's why black racist. people got cell phones so fast. That's yeah. exactly that. Like, I'm tired of this hanging shit. We are hanging this shit on a cord. Uh-uh. Fuck that, y'all. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, no, bro, not happening. Cordless for me. Exactly. What do you mean? She used to- what and what did the and I'm what did the core used to look like? Mad curly, mm. oh, right? Shit. Yeah. I'm kinky. just saying, it's kinky. racism, bro. It's bro. racism out there, yeah. dog. Ain't there racism out there? But you but, out here defending Steve Nash, sell out ass. But the, <laughs> but the, the cord from <laughs> the you know what I mean? where the black. Hey, the cord from the wall to the phone, though. How did that one look? Well, how did it look? It was straight. It was straight because that's the plug right there. Because that's the plug, right? We need some <laughs> cords. <laughs> 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 is that what you trying to say? Yo, come on, bro. Uh, what are you nah, doing? Come on, me no believe in that. What are you doing? Yo? Come on, bring us back to Sudan, bro. You over here at dinner, like, we need to accept all lifestyles and like just pay for this shit, you pussy. That's, That's the richest shit he's ever said is what? I'm tired of these broke motherfuckers pretending they want to pay for the meal I'm paying for. That's what that's all about. Let me pay for it. Exactly. Don't worry, we're gonna bleep that. You won't get in trouble. But they know what we said. They know what we said. Asshole Harvey always knows. You know what I mean? Uh, we got to bleep it out for the haters out there. So the castrating people in Nigeria. Eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so castrating people in Nigeria. How do we feel about it? If there was a way to know for certain that you were out there raping. Yeah, that's my thing. It's like if you're putting a lot of trust in the justice system that's to get it the right. Thing. 
Like, I don't trust the justice system for shit. Shocking. <laughs> why would why. you not? I can't fathom a single reason why a black man that's also Muslim in America would not have faith in the justice system. Yeah. So that shit right there, Who's man. not a citizen. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. You're really rolling the dice, man. Hey, bro, you you out there. a citizen. Can I sponsor you something? How does do it, it work? Let's do it. What do I have to do? I don't know. Down on If I knew it, I would have one, right? That's bullshit. No, absolutely. I mean, that is yeah. absolute bullshit. You have it. Somebody Google how do you become Look, American you citizen. You guys have a very uh, diverse audience. If you're an immigration lawyer and you're listening to this right now, yeah. come holler at me. Oh. You say, hold on. You have kids that are nationalized here. They were born here. You've got here. some they're, anchor they're babies, right? They're citizens, yep. Okay, so you anchored up. <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave. They can't kick you out now. Yes, they can. Uh, yeah, they can. Uh, did you heard this thing called ICE? <laughs> <laughs> like, what you mean? Yes, they're tearing up families and sending them. That's like back. what they do. That's no. what it's short for isolating from your family. That's <laughs> ICE. Is Isolation. that what ICE is yeah. short for? <laughs> yeah. For real? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. Damn, bro, is that what they be doing? Son, we can sponsor this guy. He works for Disney. You can't get a citizenship. You work, you work for, for the Disney? mouse, bro. You can't get a citizenship. You You're work for the Muslim. mouse. That's the that's anti-Jewish motherfuckers who love that's you. That's true. That's why they love you. <laughs> what? He? You're so confused. So Amin was not born here. Okay. I know. No, she's talking about the letter thing. Oh. No, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, if you don't get close to the goddamn mic when you talk, please go. How are you able to get a job if you don't have a citizenship? Well, he's got a That's green a, card. I don't have a green card. If I had a green card, I have a citizenship. What? You got a work visa? I got a work visa now. He's a work yeah. visa. And prior to that. Visa prior is not that, the credit have, card. It's something you use <laughs> yeah, yeah. to work in this country yeah, yeah, yeah. from another country. Why Wait do you have so many things to get in this country? Because this shit is lit. you never been to a club? <laughs> <laughs> the trash club lets anybody in. Okay, the fire one got a fucking red velvet rope. And that's what America is. Mm. Velvet it up. And I'm saying, you on a list, bruh. <laughs> For once, on a good list. <laughs> hey, Alex, knowing how hard it is for other people to get into this country, does it make you any more thankful? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, sir. <laughs> like just a, free, a little a little bit more Yo, appreciative okay here's a real question here's a real question when you okay you've experienced you've experienced obviously there's like um, uh, nothing is a, a binary if you will right but like you've experienced yeah I know that sounds super gay right <laughs> oh, Andrew Gillum ass word what the fuck was I thinking what the fuck was I thinking just talking about that right now put bro? a buy in binary real dog real talk I did oh, put that yeah. little kid up again <laughs> <laughs> watching Cobra Kai have you seen Cobra Kai uh, no, I haven't watched. And you want to fuck the little boy? On I don't want to fuck him. Yes, you are. But the motherfucker boy. looked like a girl. This cute. The little boy on there look heller like Mark and Andrew on the fuck him. You don't look like bro, Mark, son, bro. It's kind of weird, like bro. Now I see it. He actually kind of does look like Mark. <laughs> now I'm seeing it, bro. <laughs> I'm seeing it. Uh, stop doing that karate, Mark. <laughs> Mark was trying to take kickboxing classes. I cut that shit out real quick, bro. <laughs> I did. I told your boy. What's his name? The Chang? Spanish kid? Chang? What? Chang? Chino? What? what? Chang. Chang. <laughs> <laughs> that's close, bro. What the fuck you want me to do? That's Chino Asian and Chang, name. that's almost it. You telling me that don't look like a girl, bro? But yo, there's Show girls. The people out. There's least... girls. You don't have to fuck guys that look like girls. Yeah, but the girls are <laughs> the girls are under. Point, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. I've point. already thought it through. Let's think about the good I've ass point, I've already thought it through, Mark. <laughs> okay. okay. The girls in that show are under 18. Creep. But hey, cute on hey, look at this guy. Like a weirdo. Hey, cute on Q. So, nons, do your research. It's up to you. Who Are they the under eighteen? They're uh, under eighteen. There's some young ass girls. The mom in that show fine as fuck though. Yo, the, the mom, mom gorgeous. The yeah. white mom right yeah, there, bro. Gorgeous. Be honest. She gorgeous. She's a piece. My girl was getting jealous when I was talking about that mom. I was like, how old do you think she is? She was like forty. I was like, mm hmm. I was like, mm hmm. She got the meats. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, Taylor? She got the meats. I'm just slapping together in them fucking dungarees she's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be serious. Pushing out that little fat ass kid in that show. You know that little fat ass kid. That little fat ass kid didn't come out early. You know that meets is slapping. She out there with a cat's <laughs> deli sandwich, okay? And I'm all for it. Get me some rye bread and some mustard, cause your boy is hungry. <laughs> 
okay? I had enough. I had enough of all of you judging me. When this fine ass little boy out here perking up his titties shirt off. <laughs> Yo, look at man smoldering. Look at smoldering with the Topanga. Yo, you tell me that's not Topanga. <laughs> it looked like Mark. It really Thank does. Thank you, bro. You yeah, see? Yeah, let's go. Bro, y'all really really are really ruining like it for me. Let's go. That dude was a cute ass girl until you said it looked like Mark. Now I'm repulsed. Mm, it's what? a Pagnon. I'm just <laughs> 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 Oh fuck! That's good. All right, not for real. Where were we? (laughs) Who's finer though, the white mom or the Latina mom? Latina mom fine as fuck too. I I think you. I think the white mom's finer. (laughs) I'll be honest with you. What were you about to say? (laughs) I think. I think. (laughs) Usually, I go with the Latina mom. Like usually, I would, but in this situation, the white mom is finer. But you know who's dope as fuck? That grandma. She could catch some piccolo. <laughs> she could. The grim. Can Listen, I get, can I get like, some some Are you visuals? watching the show for porn? Like yeah. you just like every fucking character in the show, the men and the women? Yo, I can't I can't be progressive, bro. Like God. I can't be out here appreciating. You're progressing everybody. like Jerry from Cheer out this month. <laughs> <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you regress a little bit, my guy? Yeah. I want to regress. Okay. Too progressive? Is too much progress has been made? Yeah, yeah buddy. Okay. So <laughs> you've been black in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> You've been black in America. Uh huh. I've been black in Europe too. Black in Europe. Yep. What's the easiest? The easiest? I would say black in Africa is the easiest because most of the bad shit that happens to you isn't because you're black, it's because of something else. Oh, again, I'm not just talking about racial issues i'm talking about issues in general like if you had to choose a place to be black in the world where would you choose well i live here motherfucker like <laughs> obviously i've made that choice keep talking to me like that it won't be that much longer than <laughs> <laughs> keep talking we're about to make america hey. a little greater if you keep talking the agents to me like are that. gonna be right outside <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we done like, <laughs> do you want some ice with that water <laughs> <laughs> like yes he's here <laughs> no but but an interesting uh, an interesting experience yeah i'm sure that there's a lot of people in america right mm-hmm. white black indian asian etc that we're very critical of america but we haven't lived anywhere else in the world right right so a lot of times we look at the rest of the world with these rose-colored glasses right right like there's a lot of like white americans right Mm -hmm. they look at canada and europe and we're like you see how much more progressive they are over there right like look how less much less racist they are over there and then you go to one soccer game and they're chucking bananas at the black players and you're like oh people are racist in europe europe races so canada might not be no no, canada's Canada's got canada's got its own shit I, i guess my point i'm trying to make is like we all if you don't travel and experience the world you look at these other places in the world you think they're awesome and you think they're awesome and you have this really unique experience where you've been able to be black in all these places yeah and i'm curious about your perspective on when you are trying to make america better right right as we all are we all want america to be better every right. single day right but you also have this i assume and i ask you also have this perspective where you're like you're like, yo, we. This is really good too. There are parts right. of this that are good. Sure. Is that does that absolutely. make sense? Like, there, there are absolutely parts of this that that are great. That are like, I love something about America that n- most other countries and not all other countries don't have is America is a country that was built on convenience. A lot of shit we do, we do it the fastest, quickest mm. way possible. Right. That's a great point. And in Europe, like in France, to get a certain kind of uh, like paperwork done. Mm-hmm. You've got to go through this weird ass like bullshit. Yeah. And why is it that way? Because that's the way we've done it since like Napoleon. We tried to open a bank account for my mom's sister in India just to send her money. Right. Uh, yeah. That shit took three days yep. going back 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 just like the right person wasn't there hey nobody can open a bank account today right. crazy there are places in spain restaurants in spain that will be closed at lunchtime because they're taking a lunch break yeah a nap if you will a siesta it's like but it's lunchtime yeah la pausa like the what la like pausa. look there's a lot of shit in our country that's not great but like the one thing that usually tr- you know triumphs over all that is like am I, are you trying to give me money then i will make it as easy as possible yeah. for you to give me money Whereas other parts in the world, they make it difficult for me to give you my money. Here, take my money. I just want to be able to do this. Do you ever feel conflicted where there's this part of you that's like, like, uh, where there's part of you that's like, I can't say that America's got some dope shit because that almost seems like 
I'm uh, undermining oh. the black struggle. No, no, no. Does no, no. That, do you understand the question I'm asking? Yeah, I understand. Articulate I, the question I'm trying to the, ask. What you're asking me is, can I not, or do I feel like I can't gas up America? Because if I do, it looks like you're not. Part it looks like of, I'm you're like selling out. I'm yeah. selling out. Yes. I'm I'm like a Herschel Walker or something like that. Right, right. When you have the experience yeah. to potentially gas up America, because you've experienced. Sure. Well, I'm gonna tell you like book, this. Yeah. We've I've had on brilliant idiots. I remember I told you about like. Growing up in a country where the government could just come up and snatch you and right. take you away to ghost houses and they torture you. He lived you. across the street from a ghost house. Like, so crazy. So they, he like, I hear the people, people screaming at night. Tortured at right? Night. Oh, shit. And now we see people in Portland getting snatched up in unmarked vans and taken Ooh. away. And so there, there are things that I see, I'm like, Oh, this shit ain't good because I've seen it before. Interesting. Like, you see where it goes. The same way that Cuban people like who came to this country mm often are like, oh, this is how communism starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of, oh, this is how totalitarianism starts. That's when, very when interesting. When you can't question yep. the government about anything. Boom. That anything they do, they're right. It's the government. Like That's interesting, yeah, because you see a lot of these Cubans and people assume because they're not white that they would be anti-Trump, but these a lot of Cubans are super, super MAGA. Republican. But that's, super Republican, But that's, it's not that they're MAGA, mm -hmm. it's that they reject or that Democrat, they're racist. Or that they're racist. They just reject anything that is closest to communism because right. of their experience they're within communism. They're traumatized by two big things. government. Exactly. Just like government. you're traumatized by people getting snatched <clears throat> in on Mark Mans because yeah. you're like, oh shit, this is, I've seen the worst version yeah. of this. Yes. And Okay, but do you think that there is an ignorance amongst Americans of all races about what the rest of the world looks like? Absolutely. And if we knew that, we would have a lot more appreciation of what we have? No, I don't think so because I think if if your premise is this is the best country in the world, not 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 best, but, but that like we that's the premise that America. I think it's the best I'm, by far. Saying, no, it's close. I think yeah. most Americans <laughs> most other have that premise that yeah. this is the best country in the world, right? It, it is, and and that the, is a, that is the truth. And the reason why <laughs> you fight and you don't leave, like if you don't like it, go to Canada. The reason why you don't is because no, it's colder. <laughs> it is yeah. colder. It is colder in Canada. Yeah. If Canada bought an island. Shit. If, if Canada, if Canada bought, had a Florida? If Canada bought Tobago, not even Trinidad, just Tobago, they would be they would be a force to be reckoned with, bro. <laughs> no. They would be a force to be reckoned with if they just bought Tobago, a force. You know what it is? Major. People from hmm. places with great weather? Eh. Oh, <laughs> you're 100% right. You need right. awful weather to be like hard. To be hungry and, and motivated. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. There's That's no why reason I'm mad to do lazy. anything. Fucking LA, fuck LA. Look at all of Europe. The countries that are dragging down Europe are Spain, Italy, Greece, Portugal, Greece. The countries that are killing it in Europe are England, Germany, Germany Norway, Sweden, Denmark. Horrible weather. 10 months out of the year, might as well go to work. Beautiful yeah. weather 10 months out of the year, might as well eat a mango. Hey, man. Right? <laughs> a mango. Isn't that what the guy, what was the pitcher uh, for the Boston Red Sox, Pedro Martinez said? Mm -hmm. He was getting booed at, uh, it was one of my favorite things that an athlete has ever said. He was getting booed at Yankee Stadium after giving up like a game winning home run. Yeah. And uh, they're like, How'd you feel after getting booed at Yankee Stadium by the entire stadium after giving up a game winning home run? And he goes, Oh, so you don't understand. Like, uh, when I was a kid, I would just sit under a mango tree. And now I'm getting booed at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> so he's that's like, it's fucking, lit. That's like, a great line. That's a bar right there. I guess that's the perspective I'm kind of talking about. Like for me traveling Europe, I, 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 there were so many amazing things in Europe. Right. right. Like even going to Africa, right? There's these amazing things in Africa. And there was things that were like, oh shit, there's like a donkey in the lane and where people are driving yeah. and that's why there's traffic, right? So you look at things that are like awesome and you look at things that are annoying or bothersome. And then you calculate them all, and then you go to America, and you look at things that are awesome, and then you look at the things that are bothersome, and then you're like, you create, you get your like a creator player score, if you will. You know, like uh, in NBA 2K, LeBron might oh, be a 99. Yeah. <clears throat> gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Like You pronounce create a player. You no say creator player. Yeah, you like said that. in a oh, really God. weird way. I, I thought you were, <laughs> I actually legit, I'm not bullshitting you. I thought you were naming some weird psychological test, a creator parallel. Like, <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah. I thought about faking it. And I'm like, no, I don't know what that is. I guess what I'm saying is like, I'm looking at America outside of my patriotism, right? I'm trying to look at, if I'm looking at America objectively or Canada or any of these countries, objectively, right? And I'm, Putting in all these different things. Yeah. Just like a basketball player on a video game, you'd have three point shooting, done, yeah, 85, speed, agility, et cetera. Yeah. And 
after traveling, I can objectively go like, oh, this is really cool and this is really fucked up and we need to improve race relations and we need to right. improve our rights. But at the same time, like there's crazy opportunity to get rich. Like even yep. if you're dumb, you can get rich. Like yeah. you can start a business without a lot of red tape or you go to try to get your fucking license in England. You got to spend $2,000, take 40 Like, in, tax, like in England, they have a, a TV tax. You have to pay 200 pounds, I think, a year for every TV you have in your house. And, and I'm just like, but why? Yeah. I was like, oh, because this goes to the BBC. I'm like, well, if the BBC don't make fire shit, then let it like kick rocks. Like, why are we, why am I forced to pay for this? Or even better, there's like a portion of taxes that goes to the royal family. I'm like, but why? It's like, oh, because, you know, <laughs> the tourism, like, because people come and see Buckingham Palace. All right, so then like charge those people and give the royal family that money. Mm -hmm. The idea that I'm a working stiff somewhere and I've got to pay to put these motherfuckers on welfare is just beyond me. But that's, they're used to that shit. No one complains about those taxations over there. Because mm -hmm. like, that's how our life or whatever. I think the main thing is, you said it, it's like you, you have a creative player and his, his rating is this at three pointers, right? That don't mean you stop working on a three pointer, right? You get in the, 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 the thing and you, you do the objectives and you start getting that rating higher. Mm -hmm. That's what people are trying to do here. The danger is when people say, America's great and fuck it, nothing needs to change. Agreed. And if you don't like it, I do it, think that's go, his go. point is this is a great country. That doesn't mean it can't be greater. Right. And it's crazy to say, hey, if you don't like something, get the fuck out of the country. It's Those stupid. people are crazy. But yeah. also, Kind of equally crazy are the people who are like, America is a dictatorship. And it's, and it's like, I yo, mean, if I talk to you for 30 seconds, I'd be like, oh, that's a dictatorship. Democracy I got is you. over. Okay. These fucking cornball pussies but, but it's, crying. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I have friends of mine who have like literally DM me and said, this is the end of democracy. But this Shut is, this, up. This isn't the end, but this is how it starts. I, like, I think like, I, like this is what you I see. You have catastrophic thinking because you've experienced uh, it. Because I see it yes. and I know how it starts. It starts real kind of like innocent shit. Like, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we had like more of this? And then you look up and now everything is everything is, is crazy. So you're right. People overreact. But also sometimes you got to overreact to get people to take this shit seriously. Yes. Right? Yes. This is the first say, time I've been concerned about America long term. My only concern with America is it being like torn in half. That's a big concern. Yeah, like uh, that's, I think that's like the biggest <laughs> yeah, objection. I mean, no, 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 no. <laughs> you right. You right. You right, Akash. You right. No, no, meaning like, um, uh, and th that is my biggest objection to Trump, right? And I think that like anybody who's listening to this podcast, like I've been incredibly fair to fucking Trump, mm -hmm. right? Like, but I think Have that it's so fair. Like, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know what I mean? Like, so fair. But it's like, there is, a, there is something that you have to, you have to recognize that when you don't try at all to reach across the aisle, right? Now, some people that are like super pro Trump might go, but what about prison reform or something like that? Okay, and that's fair. That is, that is. But I don't, I don't think that like prison reform is a strictly democratic position, right? I think you could even argue that conservatives are like, yo, we don't want all these taxes going towards prisons. Like, right. get that shit out of there. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Point is, when you only try to satisfy your base and you're not reaching across the aisle at all, you create a you create a line of division that is incredibly thick and by emboldening your base you infuriate the opposition to the point where they hate each other and when you hate the other person when they're literally evil to you that is the end of democracy because now we can't have the conversation. If you think I'm evil, right. and I think you're evil, how are we supposed to meet in the middle about this abortion shit? And right. to that point, I think a lot of Trump's appeal, at least early on to Republicans, is look how much liberals hate him. Look how crazy yes. he drives them. I love how crazy he drives my yes. enemy. Enemy of my enemy, that's my friend. Yes. I'm not saying that's the only reason. There's a uh, yes. whole fucking no, convergence of reasons he got elected. That's one of them, I think. I, and, I, and I think it just sucks that you have Biden, who's such a fucking stiff right who is the only other actual option. corpse yeah who's just a corpse and now you're in this really shitty situation right because you recognize the division right like that's why i was really annoyed with what aoc posted right yeah. she's like i don't care if you don't like what he has to say vote for him anyway it's like what well i think i think what that's think the end of democracy right there she's that's addressing what, she's addressing people who clearly aren't gonna vote for trump but then think that like the answer is to just not vote. Like if your thing is that Trump is evil and Trump is bad and he's ruined the country and da da da. And so what are you going to do about it? I'm going to stay my ass home on election day. It's like, 
buddy, that ain't going to solve the situation. Right. Now, she's doing exactly what you're talking about Trump did, which is I'm appealing to the base. Exactly. And I'm, I, she's I, not reaching across for any, like, person who's like, I might be voting for Trump, but now she makes a great point, I'll vote for Biden. Right. That's not who she's talking to. She's talking to the people who are either going to vote for Biden or not vote at all. And, and I think that that's what annoyed me about it because I hate that kind of tribalism. Right. Like what I want more than anything in America right now, like literally if I could pick a candidate, it would be the candidate that doesn't tear the shit in fucking half. And I don't know if Biden is capable to mend anything together. Can't even put a fucking sentence together. And I don't know how he's going to put this country back together. At the same time, I am concerned that like Trump as we get close to the election, is going to lean further into the base because that is what he does. He lean will further. support the base. How much more can you and it's eat? brilliant what he did. We no, can't act like his strategy no wasn't works, genius. Because yeah. it works. Yeah. No, no, it works. But uh, my point is this, but is like fucking, once he, once you've introduced the game, this is a yeah. new game now. The yeah. new game is I lean into my base. Yep. Then the aim of the game is to win. You're not going to win the election. Like I know he's playing by these rules. I'm going to play. I'm playing ones and two, or That's by valid. ones only. He's playing ones and twos. See, I see. This is where I I disagree with you a little bit. I think the Democrats underestimate what their base is, and I think that Republicans underestimate what their base is as well. So, like Trump is leaning into the extremes, right? Right, and because of that, Democrats have leaned into their extremes, yeah. right? And they've really created this polarization where there's this entire gap in the middle of the country, which most of us probably fit in. I can't speak for you, but I know most of us in this room right now are sitting here in the middle going, these people on the left are fucking ludicrous. These people on the right are fucking ludicrous. Can we just figure out how to just kind of respect each other? I don't want you to get killed by the cops. I don't want to pay a lot in taxes. Let's figure, I don't want to go to war abroad for no fucking reason. And also fuck China. Like, I think we can all agree on all those things. I think we can come together, but because they're doing so much bickering and there's so much polarization, this gap is open in the middle and they're too much of a pussy. Both sides are too pussy. You just hop in the middle and Biden was supposed to be the one in the middle, but he can't yeah, put a fucking can, sentence together. Hey, here's the thing. Remember how they said the, the Rockets and the Lakers, this is a series for the future of the NBA. Yeah. Because if the Rockets won, then everyone says, fuck centers. We don't need it. We don't need yeah, any of that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was important for some people that the Lakers win just so that we don't lose our fucking minds. Yeah. The Rockets are like Trump, except Trump won. So what you're describing while, yes, I love centers and I love power forwards and I love the game being like some post-ups and some three-pointers and a mix of everything. Mm -hmm. That's what you're describing. Mm -hmm. But the motherfucker four years ago went and shot only threes, didn't have a center and won. And yep, that's yep. why everyone's playing the game now this no, no, way. No, I understand. Because yeah. you got to win, Andrew. And I, you're right. Maybe there is something in the middle there that could appeal or whatever. But the idea is that the team that won is the one that dictates how we're going to play the next rules. This is my, my only pushback of that would be that I think you can apply those same rules to the middle, which is this massive base that is existing and thirsty and dying for someone to speak for them. But they're not playing it. They're just not fucking playing. There's this literally 90% of the country is up for grabs and are is being forced to make this decision that actually doesn't satisfy their palate because that's the only thing that's out there. And I think it's a gross miscalculation by both sides. You know what it's like, to your point, you know, you get a video with a million views or whatever on YouTube yeah. and then you have 10,000 comments and everybody's arguing. Yeah. 990,000 people didn't care enough to comment. Right. Yeah. You you see 10,000 people arguing though and you're like, oh my God, look at the fucking, everybody's so angry. Mm -hmm. Most people don't give a fuck. Right. Now, what I was also thinking is one silver lining that could come from this divide is two more parties coming to the middle and now we have four parties. Nothing would be better to me that would be than dope. four parties. Extreme, extreme, middle left, middle that right. That would be dope. I'm, I'm all for more parties. That's the one thing I would say about a lot of the European countries that are, they have better than us. Right. Not all of them. Because some of them are just like us where it's basically two parties. Yeah. But the idea of having like multiple parties, that shit is cool, man. It's nice to have options. It's always nice to have options. Question. So you said you hate um, the way AOC is leaning that she's like just appeasing or trying to talk to her base. Tribalism. The same tactic that Trump is doing. Correct. Like, I'm critical of both of them for doing the same thing. Yes. yes. But what's the lesser to evil? Reelecting Trump who's continuing to divide up the country or electing Biden who, yes, he has a little trouble putting sentences together, but he has people around him that can at least help him manage it. And he's better at trying to keep the country through. Let me, let me just, uh, l let me just poke holes in that logic. Cause I think that is solid logic. And I think a lot of people take that right. And they go down that route. They're like, 
Well, at least with this guy, he's got good people around him, mm -hmm. right? Which is fair, but I don't know who's around him. And me as a voter, and let's talk, not talk about me, Andrew Schultz, like me, just John Doe, regular voter yeah. guy, who's like, yeah, okay, fine. I know the guy's a corpse, but maybe he's got really smart people around him, right. and I can vote for the smart people. I don't know Kamala's practices i don't know kamala's strategies she i don't know great who taste she's in gonna... tim's i know she that got... <laughs> mm. <laughs> i hate you <laughs> but you know what i'm saying like I, I the average person doesn't know so you're not really giving me anything to latch on to and you know aoc is coming out here and she's like this is a vote for marginalized people and it's like cut it out dude like you have kamala and joe biden who do not have the best records when it comes to marginalized yeah, people yeah. so cut out the bullshit you're basically just going hey don't vote for the other guy which didn't work four years yeah. ago when they ran on don't work for the other guy it's like how long do we have to prop up the democrats until they actually take us seriously and the same goes for republicans yeah. until they take us seriously and give us someone that actually appeals to our base i'm i'm what al what al saying which is the idea is that if you vote for this guy, we're going to play dirty now, but once he gets in there, he's going to start to fix this shit and make it look like a regular country again where you reach across the aisle and you do all that other shit and, you know, and kind of try and lead from the middle. But for now, yeah, everyone's going to have to get their guns out and get, and get dirty with it. I guarantee you, and I mean this a thousand percent, if there was a centrist candidate I mean, it's a thousand percent who was, wasn't even attached to a party, who literally ran as an independent, but was smart enough to make the logical arguments that the American people need to be made. Cuban. Mark fucking Cuban. If Mark Cuban run. came I thought you out. I Kanye. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fuck it. If Mark Cuban no, came no, out, like, no. literally, it would have to be someone smart enough and successful enough to fund, fund their campaign. But if they came out and just made these logical fucking arguments that Americans want to hear and they weren't worried about the pushback. He is pro Black Lives Matter, anti tax. He's the guy. Hey, listen, what's happening to black people is terrible. Also, I don't want to pay taxes. Pretty simple. Sexually harasses women. Both sides can support that. that. So we three for three on the camera. Three for three. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Or has organizations to do it. Whatever happened with that? What was that? The the Mavericks thing? Yeah, they just was like They what? hired a black woman to take care of everything. They're good. Yeah. That's basically what they did. They're like, hey, this bitch, Cynthia Marshall, is gonna lead everything. Why'd you gotta be a bitch? We're good. Because she's a woman. I don't oh. discriminate who I call bitches. <laughs> Yo, Taylor's, Taylor's not a bitch, though. No, no, no. Not to your face. Why? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Taylor. Yo, Taylor might be able to fuck you up, too. I'm not going to oh, lie, bro. Oh, yeah. There are women that could fuck you up. I could run away from them little ass legs, no problem, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo, oh, shit. she will run your <laughs> ass down, bro. That would be one hell of a... penguin ass over here, waddle yeah. over here, girl. Show me what time it is. Huh? That would be one hell oh, of a realization. Where he's like, I'll run away from it. Like, she out there sprinting like Flo That would be like, oh, shit. so funny. <laughs> Beat the fucking daylight out of you. That would be wild. Uh, okay. Hey, um, girl, don't threaten me with a good time. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second to get your breakfast right. I know your breakfasts are all fucked up. Having trash-ass breakfast. Probably don't even know how to eat breakfast no more. Okay? People are lost when it comes to breakfast. Truly. Breakfast... Breakfast was a meal that had respect. Breakfast was a meal that had dignity. Breakfast was a meal that we all agreed on. Mm. Now, people out here putting acai. What the fuck is acai? Peanut butter in breakfast? Mm. All these other flax seeds. and Get the fuck out of here. It's cereal. That's what we eat for breakfast. Okay? It's cereal. And if you're going to have cereal, you're not going to have... That sugary nonsense that got all these kids going and shooting up schools. What you're going to have is a good, healthy cereal that's called Magic Spoon, okay? You can't pump your kid full of sugar at 7 a.m. and expect them not to take some heavy artillery into class, okay? You go with Magic Spoon. <laughs> you, go with, you go with Magic Spoon, all right? Magic Spoon, I'm telling you, it has absolutely delicious flavors. But here's the thing. Zero sugar. So, zero school shooting. Zero uh, threat of school shooting. <laughs> 11 grams of protein. <laughs> only three net grams of carbs in each you serving. You're going to be too full to shoot up That's a school. It. Listen, this is this is a really important thing. Only three net grams of carbs. That means if one of those other sugar-eating cereal motherfucking kids comes to the school, your skinny-ass kid going to be able to run the fuck away. <laughs> Think about how convenient that is. Okay? Magic Spoon, I'm telling you, four flavors. Cocoa, Black Furs, Fruity, 
You're involved too. <laughs> <laughs> all, all flavors matter. Exactly. Frosted and blueberry. What? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. All I'm trying to say is it, it tastes amazing. It's absolutely delicious. It's healthy. It's delicious. It don't got no sugar in that shit. Okay. It is the best cereal for you guys to get. And it's delivered right to your fucking door. Right to your door. Delivery. You got to do it. Free shipping. Okay. All you got to do is you got to use our promo code flagrant at checkout and you get free shipping. That's magicspoon.com. Use our promo code flagrant at checkout and you get free shipping. And you know what else you get? You get a motherfucking happiness guarantee. You know what that means? If the material don't make you happy, you get your money back. How crazy is that? You got nothing to lose. You got absolutely nothing to lose. Everything to gain. Happiness guarantee. Magicspoon.com slash flagrant. Use the code flagrant. Save lives. Let's get back to the show. <laughs> okay, so before we get out of here, do you have anything to do? You don't got shit to do, right? You're chilling. Yeah, we're doing You're in New York. All right, we're hanging out. So um, this is a big fucking deal was made out of this, and I'm trying to decide whether or not this actually matters. But LeBron Jr., oh. Ronnie, smoking the weed. And I'm curious your take on it. Akash, I'm curious your take on it. Matter of fact, all of you guys, I'm curious your take on it. At first, I looked at this, and I'm like, it's a 16-year-old kid yeah. whose parents are in the bubble because I think home Shorty, alone. he's literally home alone, and he's anxious. He doesn't respect the babysitter, whoever's looking after him, sort of some family member or something yeah. like that's taking care of him. And what happens a lot of times when kids are anxious, they try to find the boundaries. They act out waiting for the rule, waiting for the line they can't cross, mm -hmm. right? Um, we've all done this. Everybody. Everybody done it, right? And I'm like, okay, that's what we're seeing here. Not a big deal. And then I looked at it and I go, wait a minute. This kid wants to play ball. Uh -huh. He wants to be part of organizations. That's he's been media deal. trained since he's fucking two years that's old. A big deal. He is abundantly aware a big deal. of what this means and the reaction this will get. Mm -mm. And, and, I, and it's just opinion. It is yeah, a possibility. Yeah, both both could work, right? But and boss and I wonder if, and this might be reaching, you push me back, but I wonder if at 6'2", 16 years old, playing okay in high school ball, mm -hmm. Bronny is maybe starting to realize oh, shit. that he might not make the league and because of that, he can start making self destruct. So not necessarily destruct, but like make self sabotage. Not even self sabotage, but more like I'm going to make decisions that like any regular teenager would make that wouldn't go to the league. And smoking a little weed might be that. Right. I, I wonder if that's playing into it. Okay, thoughts. I, I would say this. I would say even though he's been media trained since he was two or whatever you want to call it, he's still 16. Mm. And he's when a you're kid. Six, he's, he's, and yeah. you do dumb shit as a kid, Correct. even when you know. It's not even like, oh, fuck, I didn't even think about that. Like, he knows. <laughs> right. But also, you're like, like you said, mom and dad are gone, man. You know how much dumb shit I did when my parents were gone, like on a trip? Man, fuck, man. Like, that's, you just do that and it has nothing to do with like rich family, poor family, like great upbringing, uh, you know, terrible upbringing. All that doesn't matter. At that age, like you said, you are seeking out what are the boundaries of the shit I can do. Mm -hmm. You're just having fun, man. It's not a big deal. But also, you got to understand, it wasn't somebody caught you on camera smoking. Your dumb yeah. ass put your own. And that's the that's, part. What's up? Yeah, but he yeah. chose to videotape himself. It's not that he was smoking. Smoking. I, I, this <laughs> is... No, 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 that's a good Fair. point. Fair. But, but another thing that he did is we're smoking the nugget. Like he almost tagged his dad in his own <laughs> tweet, right? He's, he's this like, is, I understand how this happened. It's a big deal. Yeah. I don't know about you guys growing up in an immigrant family, at least Indian immigrant. Everything you do reflects upon your family. Sure. Anytime you a kid embarrasses somebody, like, yo, he's embarrassing his entire yep. family. Mm -hmm. Sure, you're a kid, you make dumb decisions, but if you're Bronny fucking James, you don't think your decisions reflect upon your family of with a billion dollar empire and you put yourself 
yo, you, you're a kid, you fucked up, but you fucked up. Mm. But hold on. Mm. But having said all that, you grew up in an immigrant family just like me. I had that same speech and everything. Boo you not doing any dumb who? shit? I did I'm very little immigrant. dumb shit. You did very little dumb shit? I did very little Mr. dumb Perfect, shit. Mr. Perfect, ladies and gentlemen. I did very little dumb shit because it reflects upon your family. Sure, mistakes yep. happen. Call me this a is, piece of shit right he now. He is calling this me a piece is, of shit. This is, is very, there is potentially tens of millions of dollars online or whatever. Mm-hmm. This is LeBron fucking James. This guy is a brand. For you to smoke weed, put yourself on IG Live. Sure, do kids do stupid things? Okay, fine. But that doesn't me- make it not a huge mistake. It's a huge mistake. In the it's grand a huge scheme of things, deal. what's it going to do to him? Not Nothing. too much. Then it's but not it a huge temporarily. mistake. Then Yo, it's not a I, huge mistake. I, I, go, Alex. Go. John Wall was just... Bozo. Throwing up. John Wall is not LeBron James. John Wall, don't I'm put them saying, in the same I'm conversation. Saying, he's in the Bozo. league. He has endorsements. If John Wall loses knows. his fucking zigzag sponsorship at Reebok Damn. or whatever, <laughs> don't nobody give a fuck about but your little stupid ass sneakers nobody wears. But he's an the video you're doing at Dougie is the highlight of your career in like 2009. That. Who cares? It's John Wall. Kids don't you know not the LeBron. Magnitude. We've been media trained as kids, but our version of media trained is I'll uh, say this. Respecting adults. Hold on. Bronny all is respecting adults. We've all done little things and uh, behave to get in trouble even though we've been media trained our whole life to respect adults and so like maybe you talked in class class clown or some shit like that got kicked out hey you were a kid you were smart you know that would make your family uh, upset at you but you, you still did it, it. Yep. yeah so that's what, he's just hey, a kid I see how kids make kid. mistakes but I'm not gonna say ah oh, he's a kid no you fucked up no, uh, yeah, you're a kid like, you're gonna up. keep fucking would, up but it's also not his first thing. IG slip up he been on IG acting up before what was the other one no, he did. Like, I remember. There was some, some little shit. shit. It wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't that big of a deal. But that was a small <laughs> thing that you could have been like, yo. <laughs> Someone asked him he was smashed Dwayne Wade's son. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or daughter or whatever the fuck. So right? That ain't a fuck. And then a, he was like, yo, chill. Cut that out. That one is. That ain't a fuck up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he handled that perfectly, bro. <laughs> I know, right? He handled that shit sure. perfectly. Respect. So, <laughs> and then. <scoreboard. that, laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I would say is this. There is something slightly different. In that when you have social media as a, as a person who has like some level of fame, okay, you know the reaction that you get when you post something there. So for example, like when he does a TikTok where they're doing some dance together, the family, and then it makes Sports Center, it makes everywhere, mm-hmm. he knows the ripple effect of his actions. Mm-hmm. So that's way more clear to him than it is some average kid who doesn't have the spotlight and they don't see their actions become a national news story mm-hmm. when they do something. So he knows by smoking that it's going to be on Sports Center, it's going to be on Fox Sports News, it's going to be on every Instagram post, every blog, everything. He knows the shit show that's going to cause. I'm surprised you didn't go. I thought you were going right for your wheelhouse. Which is? Which is pussy was involved somehow or another. Interesting. Like, what do you yeah. mean? <laughs> Meaning, like, this might be on Sports Center and I'm gonna get in trouble, or I might impress. Look at me, I'm on a grand, I'm lit. Come on, all these fucking young rappers and shit like that. He wants to be a kid. You think he needs help getting pussy, bro? Yo, you're Bronny James. Dog. Bronny James needs help getting pussy, bro. Son, but he still wants to look cool. Like these little he kids look up to, to these mumble rappers. They all do this shit. I'm surprised he don't got purple hair. Yeah, like but you can't wait. get away with it. You can't so get away with it. it. If you are a billionaire kid, you can't get away with it the way fucking some other kid could. You are more famous than John Wall right now. Yeah, but look what you happened. You can't get away it's with that shit. Nah, that's true. He's bro. not even that punished. No, nah, but it's true. He could maybe be doing it just to try to impress his friends. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably trying to get some pussy from Tabagnon. <laughs> <laughs> he might be dude i get it buddy yeah. i get it but you're you know also you're assuming that he posted it on purpose right like he, put on, he, he did it was on instagram live it was, it was on, on live or on his story and well i think it was on his story, story and he put a caption saying smoking nuggets while my pop smokes the nuggets and they're mm. playing the denver nuggets mm. or so it was something like that. It was, this was all calculated <laughs> what a witty child i mean what a witty, <laughs> i like it I, I was pretty into it okay um and then Yes, my dear. What what is that? But I need you to talk into the mic. You know how much we love hearing from I you. I think that um, yo flagrant two Taylor, mad funny, bro. Yo, love it. I don't I know what it. happens on Brilliant Idiots. <laughs> wow. I don't know what happens on Brilliant Idiots, but flagrant two Taylor, she on fire. This girl's on fire. <laughs> what did she say earlier? That we were dying laughing. She was uh, making fun of me how I talk dirty. Oh yeah. Uh, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> like, do you want oh, this dangling? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, go Taylor. 
why is it such? It's a big deal because it's LeBron's son, right? Yes, correct. 100%. And I think that LeBron already knows that his son smokes weed. That's or fine. Or he got caught before. That's Probably fine. True, And I yeah. think he's more mad that it's like it's putting yes. him in a negative light yes. or whatever yep. it's called. But yep. the average person not gonna get care if their kids smoking weed. Especially, like, that, yeah. I also think like weed. we're a little bit older. And I feel like if you grow up in California where weed is now legal. decriminalized or legal. legal, like yeah. I feel like parents probably have a different relationship mm-hmm. with weed than we our parents did growing up. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. LeBron not LeBron's not about just California. LeBron is national. He's no, middle no. America. Yeah, but LeBron, I'm saying like, I'm saying it's it's especially in his friend group, it's exactly. super you less grow up organized. Where everybody, group, cool. Every where everybody you know, their parents are very openly going to a dispensary and stuff. It's not there's I, I can't stress it enough being someone who lives in the West. And then comes out here. It's a shock to me, like to walk down the street and hear people say, "I got, I got that gas." I'm like, "Are you trying to sell me marijuana on the yeah. street, like yeah. a poor person?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, go, I walk into a place and they've got like I'm sliding on my back doors. Dan, yeah, no, it's just so it's so insane to me that like the eastern part of this country, parts of it are just stuck in the Stone Age when it comes to weed. Whereas, like in California, Nevada, and right. Arizona, like, and this is red and blue states in the West. No one gives a shit. It's it's like getting a drink. Now, is there something about a 16-year-old getting a drink? Like Conservative, okay. bro. This guy is a sneaky-ass conservative. You, you trying to take jobs away from black and brown people, bro. How? <laughs> These dispensaries come around. It's oh, going to be true. white people yeah, dealing with like, drugs, it's, it's not it's black not, and brown people. It's not the, the corner, dispensaries. Bro. You know what kills them? It's the, it's the farms. Because now they have like these massive farms. Also white farms. people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing that's... Well, who's working the farms, so? though? There you go. The system works. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is still this. <laughs> all right, oh, um, every fucking time I come here, no, man. it's okay, bro. We're gonna get you fired on one of the these line. days, bro. Yeah. It's all good. We're gonna free you. We're gonna free you from the mouse. Yeah, we're gonna free you from the mouse. Okay, <laughs> you, um, you better have a job for me. I got you, son. Yeah. And, the, and the visa. I hey, I want to sponsor you. Oh, you hey, said it was easy. Hey, Hold on, man. Hey, it is I easy. I want to see if I can sponsor you for real. Dead ass. <laughs> Yo, man, by the way, thank you. What you got? You got on that good shit? Oh, man. Oh, this, God. This man. miracle gross, son. Yeah, man. Last time I was here, man, you shamed me into it. And I said, you know what? Okay. But it's looking good. Hey, man. Like, I was skeptical, but I was like, this shit is actually oh, working. Well, how that dangling working? It's still working. That's my That's an amazing thing. Bro, like, I was gold. really worried, but it was like, nah, oh. Nah, nah, nah. They make that shit up, bro. That's weak, weak dick dudes, bro. <laughs> that's weak dick dudes. Okay, that's all made up nonsense. If you want to come through with the hammer, you got a full head of hair. You got a full head of hair and then a the hammer. <laughs> I Eat actually regret bitch. not doing it early. Like, if yeah, I you got to do it early, you would have had more, bro. You would have had more, man. You go tear that shit the fuck up. All right, uh, big fight this weekend. Uh, friend of the show. Israel Adesanya mm. is out there in fucking Dubai. What is it? You might have Arab Emirates. Where the fuck is it? Fight Island, but Whatever it's out it is. there. It's in Emirates, yeah. It's, it's in off, Emirates. Off the coast of Dubai, yeah. Okay, so they're in Fight Island. He's fighting this guy, Paulo Costa. He's going to whoop that fucking ass. Yep. <laughs> um, this, is, this shit is literally going to be light work. I think people are like, they see the size of Paolo, mm-hmm. right? Because he's all like juiced up and everything like that. And they start thinking like, oh, is he going to be too big for Izzy? This, that, the other. A lot of people don't realize like Izzy is fucking gigantic. He's Yo, that night we saw him in LA. Yep. I was staggered. When he came to the, came, my show at the, yeah, at the Laugh, Factory. Laugh Factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was staggered because he looks like a skinny dude on he's, TV. He looks skinny on TV. And then you see him in person he's and fucking, he's huge yeah. and long. Yeah. Okay. Super long arms, super long legs, reach is crazy. So this guy's going to come in, this little like bulldog looking guy, Paulo Costa, he's going to come in. I think Izzy is going to pick him the fuck apart. What Uh he wants more than anything is an aggressive fighter that's going to bring the fight to him because that lets him do all his counter punching and striking. Just, I think this is light work. Now, does he get the knockout? I don't know. It really depends about that Paulo Costa guy's chin. He might have a good chin. But in terms of like piecing that fucking guy up, I think it's a wrap. I think this is actually an easy, exciting fight for Izzy. I think he really exposes this other guy. We gonna order it. Have you talked to him? Yeah. Since he's been out there, I hit him yesterday. What's it like? Where in the island? Yeah. I don't want to ask him really about that shit because, like, I don't want to get in like this is fight week. Right. Like he's got like I don't want to get you. in nobody's head. You I know got what you. I mean, like my 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 feeling is just like, yo, we got you. We riding with you. Right. Let's right, right. go. What's up? What's going on? Is this his first fight out there? I think so. Yeah. I'll be interested to hear what it's like because it's like I want, now now I'm really into comparing bubble experiences. Yes, like, yes, 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 yes. I was yes. talking to a friend of mine who was at the NHL bubble and it's like 
Their shit is nowhere near as lit as the NBA one. Really? Yeah, their shit is boring up there. Stars man. might win the cup, though. That's cool, being from Dallas. Only time I've given a fuck about hockey in my life, <laughs> ever. I didn't even know the bubble was going on with hockey, one. Nah. And two, that's sad because the hockey dudes are also the most, like, uh, the biggest party animals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are they by far the biggest partiers because yeah. nobody recognizes them. They're out there in one oak. Just partying, missing teeth. I heard everybody who wins the Stanley Cup on the team gets the cup for a day. Yeah. Man, the shit that cup has probably seen. Oh, yeah. Jesus oh, yeah. Christ. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. And we, it's the same cup. It's yeah. It's the same cup. So it's, They just add a ring yeah. to it at the bottom or whatever. The guy who is the official chaperone, I talked to him. Yeah. And he told me, like, first of all, I said, yo, if this thing's been around for 150 years, how is it only this tall? Yeah. He said every, like, six years, they, they take it. They a ring. Well, no, they, they, and they send the other one to the Hall of Fame. Hey. So it always just keeps moving up. And then once you get popped off, it goes back to the Hall of Fame. Interesting. And the other thing he said was, like, he went it's with. It's not the real one. It, no, it is the real one. Keep it, keep it 100. The, the one that keep goes. Keep it 100. The one that goes. He, he went to Russia with, what's his name? They took that Ovechkin. Cup. Ovechkin took that motherfucker. Or Russia took the cup. Oh, you talking about that shit? I think they took the cup I've to heard, Russia. I've heard this shit, but like I don't, I don't. He says because he has to be in the room with the cup. He would lost it for a week or something like that, or like they took it somewhere. There's a story where he wasn't with it, and then they have this cup, which is the cup right. we have today. And the conspiracy is that the, the Russians took it. The Russians took it yeah. and they gave a replica cup. Taking Stanley Cups, elections, these motherfuckers doing everything. They really <laughs> out there, bro. Russians? Yeah. This shit is wild, man. It's like they're scarier now than they were in the eighties. <laughs> yeah. Yo, real talk. Eighties, they were all talk. Yeah. <laughs> now motherfuckers are doing all the shit. Yeah. And they just kept getting bodied. Like you knew if a Russian was a villain, they were getting got. Yeah. Nah, man. Now you don't even know the villain. Yeah. They're just in the shadows. And we slept on their bitches in the 80s. Did like, we? Yeah, because you would have like some decent looking like Russian chicks, but they all have like short haircuts and shit. Like, what was that girl's name? <laughs> thinking about the fucking, fucking braids or whatever. Brigitte Nielsen. <laughs> yeah, the, the, she was dating she that guy, wasn't it? The clock. Flavor Flav. Clock guy. Yeah, yeah Flavor Flav. She's and, Swedish uh, though. But, yeah, yeah, that bitch could She's go. what? She's Swedish. Same shit. Be gone, bitch. Be gone. Yeah. <laughs> but they were they are fine as fuck, dude. Oh, that's funny why I call a white girl a bitch, huh, Taylor? Come on. Inconsistent. Oh, that's fucked up. Inconsistent. White bitches need some respect too. Yeah, you can't keep, be out here yeah, disrespecting these white on all these bitches, bitches Taylor. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Sorry, white bitches. <laughs> yeah. I mean, didn't mean that. I mean, didn't mean to co-sign that. Disney and mean. Walt Disney and mean. From here, the ESPN company did not mean to co-sign me calling you some bitches. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's every, see how every, uncomfortable we can make a man in his eyes. before we run out of time on a card. How much time do we have left on the card? This is the this is the paywall <laughs> one, right? Right? Just two No, minutes? it's not the paywall. It's one. not paywall, bro. Hey, it's not the and so and half, half, the last like, time you were on torture chambers. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you in one now, my guy. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll do that. We'll, we'll do that. All I'm trying to say here is, I mean, we got to start treating people with respect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean that 100. percent That goes for all the bitches. All of them. We got to treat with respect. Everybody, we got to treat with respect. Everybody's life matters. All. <laughs> lot, no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel about how do you feel about the the, the war of uh slogans oh man that shit is and it's, uh, it's it, the dumbest shit like when people want to get so deep into like well actually technically what this means oh, is man. but i tell you what the crazy thing is like i keep learning is that we're happening wait what happened no i mean we're at like 20 seconds oh, okay so we'll just stop, stop for a second yeah. and then we're gonna just put another card all right, guys. Sorry about that. We had to take a quick break, man. Uh, switch cards. We be having so much fun with Amin. Amin El Hassan. Go check out my man Amin. Um, I want to get back to that Izzy fight real quick or just MMA in general. Did you guys see the Colby Covington uh, fight? I heard about it. Where's Tyron Woodley? Did you guys see this at all? You heard, you heard about it? Oh, fight? The fight? No. I, yeah. I, I saw the the argument he had with uh, oh, Usman. The presidential yeah, call-in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Kamaru. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that shit was mad funny, bro. It's uh, you know, do you think he lost it? Like he broke character at some point? Oh, I think he. Do you know what I think is happening with Colby Covington? For everybody uh, who's listening right now, Colby Covington was a fighter. Uh, he's a very good fighter. He wasn't getting a lot of like buzz or popularity, and then he assumed this character, which was like this "Make America Great Again" yeah. MAGA guy, right? But it was a character. He had like somebody writing lines for him and like scripted, and it wasn't it wasn't like a real thing. Mm. And he started to like gain all this interest, and people really invested. And like, I guess I don't know if there was a lot of MAGA support, but there was tons of anti 
MAGA hate mm-hmm. in the same way like Floyd Mayweather. What's up? No, no. no. Uh, in the same way that like Floyd Mayweather garnered a lot of interest off of hate, like people were invested in seeing him lose. So like Colby became this villain. Right. Right. Yep. And um, so all of a sudden he's this villain. And um, I think what happened to him is the same thing that happened to Andrew Dice Clay. Oh, shit. Oh, two method lost himself in the yeah. character. I think he's got, I think he became it. And I think it's easy to become something when you're getting so much hate for it because yeah. you double down into where the love is. Well, especially yeah. when you're making money off of it. When oh, it it's like yes. your business is doing better than it's ever done before. Business is booming for the first time in your life. You have some control. You have a fan base that actually yeah. supports you and you don't want to lose all those things, right? It's almost like the cult thing. It's like you become part of a cult and you're like, well, shit, I might not like exactly what's going on in this cult, but I like having my friends. I like having a purpose. I like mm. having a position. I like doing something I like. So I think he started to actually become this complete character that he was like the guy was like, I don't know, like early stuff. He was just like one of the dudes, like yeah. super yeah. regular guy, like not extreme, really anything right. like, and, um, I mean, even when you see him, like if you don't know who we're talking about, when you see him, he looks like a cartoon character. He's got the USA pants yeah, yeah, and he's yeah, got yeah, a yeah. MAGA hat and he wears like wrap around Oakley shades. Yeah, like yeah. he plays the, it's, he's clearly playing a part. So here's the thing. I think he was playing the part and I think now it's become, and after like in the press conference, he's doing this thing where he's like attacking, like he, he whooped Tyron Woodley's ass. Like he just fucking destroyed this dude. And they had like a beef previous and whatever. Yeah. And it was, he, he kicked his ass. And, um, and what he had this kind of like conversation where he was talking shit about Tyron Willie afterwards. And he started like spouting out a lot of this uh, anti Black Lives Matter rhetoric that you hear in like, like from like YouTube commentators a lot. It's like, it's a Marxist organization. It's a communist. <laughs> he's a communist. He's a Marxist, right? And I understand like where they're going with that because if you go to like the Black Lives Matter website for the organization, it yeah. will say that they're, you know, have these values that were about like breaking down the Western idea of like the nuclear family or whatever the fuck. The Black Lives Matter, the organization is probably different than the movement. Does that make sense? Like these are two different entities and the movement is focused on one specific thing, which is police brutality. And then the the organization has a bunch of different things. Like who, who knows? Who cares? Point is he's like spouting all this stuff and people could say that it's all to hype up fights, this, that, the other. But for me, it represented the first time that hyping up a fight went outside of the hacky stereotypes of who that person was. Right. Usually for fights to hype up, right? If you're fighting against an Italian guy, you come in there eating a meatball sandwich. I'm going to eat this guy like a fucking hero. Right Floyd Mayweather's coming with a sombrero on. He's like, this is what I do. I take out Mexicans. Like, It's just the lowest common denominator stuff. And it's funny to hype it up because you're attacking identity. But at the same time, it's not so offensive that you haven't heard it from anybody that you're playing basketball against. Right. Or this. It was like within the realm of... Of shit talk. Of shit talk. Does that make sense? Like what Mantra's hero called Luke a bitch ass white boy. Exactly. exactly. It's like we've all kind of heard that. We could act like it's a bigger deal. And of course, the NBA is going to be like super hypocritical uh, because they're not going to address that at all because they pretend like they're like super woke. I mean, but did, the average ball player. They did, it, but they did address it. A little bit. They find the dude. Like, what, what do you want? What did they find him? They find him like 50 grand. I didn't realize that. I, I thought he just apologized. I had not heard that. Montrez got fined. Oh, I, I just saw him apologize, but he wasn't like forced to apologize mm-hmm. or he wasn't suspended or any of that kind of shit. No, he wasn't. Yeah, no. Right? But like, I guess I guess the point is, is like, this is the first time you see this, you see like actual political rhetoric in the shit talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's, it's yeah. It go, but. Like, even in like cricket matches between like Pakistan and <laughs> Pakistan and India, right? Like, no, I'm listening. This is serious. Like, <laughs> like as far as you've told me, there's really funny banter back yeah, and forth. Yeah, 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 What's yeah. like what? Gali Gali me short hey. Pakistani short hey. What does that mean? I was at a cricket World Cup of cricket when India won the finals. Yeah. They start chanting that at the end of the match. It means there's noise in the alley. Pakistanis are thieves. That's what it means. Wow. But that's we're a playing, crowd, though. We're playing Sri Lanka at the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, that's a, no, that's some real there shit. There you go. That's some real shit because at Washington Wizards games, like 10 years ago, whatever, when they wanted the crowd to get loud to boo some machine at the free throw line, they would put a picture of J.J. Redick up Holy in his Duke Christ. jersey. Because mm-hmm. the idea is just like people in Maryland hate, hate fucking Duke. Duke that's and right. like, he, J.J. Redick is nowhere near this match. That's but it's yeah, just so like, funny. so I like that shit. Like, we're going to talk shit. <laughs> we don't like you so much. We're going to talk shit about you when you're not But here. again, like, 
the JJ Reddick thing or the Pakistan it's Indian all thing. Kind of fun. There's no rhetoric. Yeah. They're thieves. Yeah. What yeah. the fuck is that like? <laughs> yeah. Who cares, right? Yeah. It's not like they're specifically saying Kashmir is ours. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. They, they literally, if you want to think about it, they literally are leaving politics out, out of, of sport. Yeah. And what's interesting about the Coley Covington thing is you didn't hear a lot of the people who are like, stop talking about politics and ah. sports, man. Yeah. Like, we didn't hear a lot of that conversation, right? Right. I didn't right. hear a lot of those people like, why are you making this political, bro? That's wild that he went that far. Like, is that, so that's the writers, though, right? Is that the writing room? His, I mean, his theory, and I, I can believe it, is that he's becoming the character he played. Wow. Because wow. they even pushed back on it. They're like, wait, why is he a communist? Right. And he was like, well, he hates America. He doesn't do anything. And he's like, what, what is that? <laughs> what does that exactly yeah, mean? he had nothing. You know there, where he's fucking up and where all these guys fuck up, I think, is in wrestling. You always get a lot of popularity by being a heel, and then you flip back to being good. Yeah. And he, he he's skipped going that too step. Far. Well, yeah. I think what happened is he lost to Kamar Usman. If he won, you think he'd have flipped? I think what, what he was going to do is... I think it was character, character, character. He beats Kamara Usman, and I think he just becomes likable. Like, I think he's just like, listen, we got to unite. We got to bring everybody together. Like, let's not have hate. Like, all this other. I really think there would have been the flip, and he would have been the poster boy. So I think the UFC gets behind it. Right. And in a way, it almost looks, it makes uh, uh, Trump and MAGA look better because now it's not this extremist guy out there spouting yeah. rhetoric and like, hey, let's just be Americans, love each other, and let's fucking dap it up. It's all good. And then he gets his fucking face broken by Usman. He got his ass beat, right? No, it was a really competitive fight. Usman okay. broke his jaw, broke his like jaw. did some of the jaw, but it was super competitive. And he claims it was an early stoppage. Amazing fight on both their backs. Okay. Usman won. Okay. Stopped him. Got it. Amazing fight. But I think after that, he's like, oh no, fuck that. I'm real with this shit. <laughs> or you got to keep leaning in until you can do the heel turn. This actually impresses me about Ty uh, Tyson Fury. Mm -hmm. He was able to be the asshole and then flip, but never brought race into it. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. was an asshole. You didn't like the guy. Cocky, whatever. He did a lot of the shit like the, the flashy black boxer would do. Quote yes. unquote. And he, 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 unlikable talking shit, and then he wins, and he's like, yo, this guy, wow, they're such a great fighter, man. Love this guy. And I he mean, still like, calls him a bum. Yeah, and then calls <laughs> him a bum for the next fight, yeah. and then again, hey, this guy's great, you know? And I think he does have one advantage. It's an accent. Outside of accent. Gypsy? He's a gypsy. Mm. Oh, that's that that's he, his ethnic card that he can play? I mean, amongst just white people, he's Is that a thing here? I know it's a thing in Europe. Is that a thing here? No, no, no. We don't even know what the fuck gypsies are. Here, right. right? There was that yeah. one TV show about them, but we don't really Snatch, know. Snatch kinda. Snatch kind of put us on yeah. a little bit, but we know they're marginalized. So I think it protects him a little bit because he's like Look, I'm not out here hating other people. I'm literally named after a black guy. Right. I come out here singing black musicians every single day. Like, clearly, I don't hate black people. Right. 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 Like, clearly, my family doesn't hate black people. And all that second class treatment that black people are talking about, we get it, baby. <laughs> this is what it's like. I like how black people are just talking about it. <laughs> you guys talk about this shit a lot. <laughs> I've never seen it. <laughs> Dude, man, what are you talking about? <laughs> It's not like there's videos out here every fucking week. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a, it, it, look, it's just an interesting like switch, I think, yeah. where like po politics is, you, you got to see this week like politics really embedded in sport. Yeah. You know, and specific agenda. And you I know, was Usman like, comment on his videos. Oh, yeah? Well, I hit Multiple him today times. and I was like, bro, don't let him drag you into the MAGA thing. And if he brings up the MAGA shit, say, uh, you should go make your face great again. Yeah, right? that's great. and I was like, it's, line. "It's gonna come." Oh, hold on, come on, bro! I gotta help out my guy. Hold on. Is, is there a cottage industry for this? Yeah, writing for like you don't think Chris Rock was probably punching up shit for people that he <laughs> liked? You don't think Barack Obama got some bars from Chris? Chris oh, is an shit. asshole if he didn't hook up Barack. Yo, Chris I, an asshole if he didn't look at them speeches and be like, "Can I do some sort no, of punch?" That's different though, like. Politicians do have that. They do have comedians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about fighters. I haven't done it for any fighter dudes outside of just like messaging Kamar. Like yeah. Style Bender, he's so good with the social media shit. You know, right. He's better than me with the social stuff. But like if he was ever like, if Izzy was ever like, yo, I got this speech for whatever, like you want to help me out? Of course. Fucking of course. I want them to look good, <laughs> man. That's the thing. Like new media folks, it seems to me new media folks help other people that are in new media. Because we're not competing for that position that the corporation's going to give us. Right. 
You know, like, where I don't know where it is on, on ESPN, but, like, I don't know if you and other guys are beefing for the hottest take because nah, it's not like that. I'm sure there are people who are like that. Right. Like, what? Uh, Dan Levitar tells a story about the first time he did PTI, he actually did it with Skip Bayless. Uh, and, I've heard and, nothing good about Skip ever. And he said Skip literally, like, was, like, hiding because he didn't want Dan to steal his takes. And Dan is like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. I mean, he's Like, everything was kind of, like, hyper- competitive mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. and then just like ah, dude i'm just here to do a show so there are people like that most of the people i'm friends with aren't mm -hmm. because like we just don't give a shit enough and and we always understand like when you make good content it creates an appetite for more good content and that's what these like social media kids have done so well like all these tiktok dudes yep. and vine and instagram they've realized like yo instead of like separating mm -mm. let's get a fucking house together we'll get a house and yeah. fucking all create stuff yeah. and just build each other everyone's profiles. building their own uh, bringing their own audience and so we, all yes. we're doing is we're introducing people to like oh we got this audience exactly which is why i want to plug my podcast right Hit now it! <laughs> uh two podcasts first of them is cinephobe this is the podcast where we review movies that are rated 40 percent or worse on rotten tomatoes oh. <laughs> and then we decide whether it's like Hey, this is actually a pretty good movie, or no, this shit was actually terrible. What is the worst movie that you actually think is good? The worst one I actually think is good. I oh. wish I remembered. One of your early episodes, you reviewed a movie that you said was bad, and I was like, I fucking love this movie. Was it uh, Theodore Rex? Probably a rom-com. No, I was like Gross Point Blank or some shit. Maybe I don't no, know. No, 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 no. It's, it's got to be a really bad movie for us to have done it. Okay. Cop Out? No, 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 no. Was it Coffee I'll and check. Kareem? No, no. Was it? I'll check. I'll check so you stop naming Kangaroo movies Jack 2? <laughs> okay, go. What's the worst one that's actually good? The worst one that's actually good, I would say probably the fucking Heartbreak Kid. A lot of people hate that movie. A lot. I like it. A lot of people hate it, though. Ben Stiller. Yeah, it was that. And... Right. And uh, Malin Ackerman and uh, Rob uh, Cordery. Oh, no. Um, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> it's a Ben Stiller rom com. It's a Ben right. Stiller rom com, yeah. It's gay. It's for gays. Or? It's for everybody. <laughs> it's for everybody. Okay. All, all people. Got you. Okay. All right, fine. And then the other podcast. The other podcast is Black Opinions Matter, B O M M. That's the one where we talk about black shit. Boring! No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, go, go. Yeah, go. damn it, man. Go, 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 it's go, a go. plug. Black, <laughs> it's a plug. Black Opinions Matter. Yo, you got matter. some great movies on here. The Departed? No, that, that, was, was, a great... that was April Fool's movie. Okay. Uh, Along Came Polly, fantastic. Hall Pass, fun time. Yeah, Hall Pass is good. Yeah. Along came Polly. Great movie. We've seen Hall Pass. We saw that together, I yep, think. Yep, saw it together. Did you hold hands? We didn't hold hands. No, I sucked his dick before the movie, so we were fine. Yo, 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 bro. Come on, dog. Hey, yo. Come on, dog. Ronnie over here. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on, dude. That shit was wild, bro. We sucked each other's dicks, bro. That shit was mutual. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, look, in all seriousness, okay, black opinions matter. matter Can we be on the podcast? podcast. Us two and Mark. <laughs> so here's the funny you yes al yes we have kind of a like a no white people allowed yeah rule, but well, we have we have now, let me ask you a question yes mm. doesn't it feel good <laughs> <laughs> let me let me let Does me ask, a little party it feel good let me answer your question it feels fucking phenomenal because exactly. I, I know people Separate, be like, but equal that was the idea you're not saying that i can't have my podcast <laughs> you're just saying that you have your podcast with your people yeah you no, know it's a fun time man, to tell you. people they can't come on the podcast and they say why not and i said because you're white because you're <laughs> white and that is allowed but we have had uh, a couple of white people but they were produced jake one the music producer and we had the music producer uh poobs what if you had a white person on but he wasn't allowed to sit and he had to drink a different water can i drink strawberry lemonade <laughs> that, was that <laughs> i think we asked two different questions but yeah sorry uh okay so listen so this black opinions matter podcast yes okay then i'm going to promote even though white people aren't allowed are white people allowed to listen yes absolutely we we encourage oh it. they still want your dollars we take oh, they just don't want your voices i see how it shut is shut up and listen andrew oh, oh shut up and press play oh shit Ooh. so you're just gonna monetize me and my people make money of us, but not represent us on your platforms. Where have I heard about this? Also, hmm. also, we we uh we exploit your culture. <laughs> podcasting. <laughs> we did invent podcasting. Did you? Yeah. Are you sure? The first podcast. Who was who was it? 
Had to be a white guy. Wow. <laughs> had to be. Making a lot of assumptions there. Come on, bro. Podcasting? Podcasting. What black dude, you know, just got a bunch of recording equipment, a bunch of microphones, and that absolutely nobody hey, yo, even a podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a black dude with, like, recording equipment. He's rapping, bro. He's singing. He's making music. Yo, He's not I, talking about murders. I love how Akash's black guy voice sounds like he's from Dallas. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, it's, a very Texas, black. it's a very Texas black guy Eiffel. voice. Eiffel. Hey, fool, we finna hit this podcast, fool. <laughs> okay, so Black Opinions Matter podcast. Is there a specific thing that you guys have black opinions on? Everything. The idea is that, like, the... Taylor. Not <laughs> Taylor. Taylor. I don't know what just happened, Taylor, but I apologize. <laughs> okay, I'm white. Go on. <laughs> says, don't you ever... You got, you got ahead of it. <laughs> don't you ever tell a black woman what she can or can't do. <laughs> Okay, don't oh, you shit. ever, right, Taylor? Ain't that right? Yeah. You know what I mean? If you were white, I'd tell you to shut your ass up right now. <laughs> That's what I'd do. I'd say no one asked your ass. Uh, That's what you got to do. That's how you tell. <laughs> That's how you tell black women <laughs> the roundabout way to tell black women how you feel is you like if you were white, <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky you ain't white. God hadn't blessed you with this melanin. Uh, no, it, it it's. It's everything. It's everything. Right, and right. the idea is that because at first. Does melanin come from water? No. I'm just <laughs> Yo, can we play that back? <laughs> can we play that back? It's how I. Black, it's how I. Black, it's how I black people have so much melanin. Is it from all the water? No. <laughs> you don't like watermelon? You, what? Yo, chill, fam. Hey, black opinions chill, matter, bro. dog. Yeah, let her have her own opinion, dog. I'm just saying, man. It's such a delicious fruit. Nice. What did you guys have back in Sudan? Just watermelon. Sand melon? Watermelon. That's not a racist, yo. That's not a racist. That's not a racist. That's not a racist. shit even got out. Sand melon. It's so stupid. It was good. <laughs> yeah, there's a rim shot. Uh, That's what they call a rim shot. Yo, yeah. I always your generation has a word. way different definition. <laughs> <from that. laughs> yo, rim I'm shot. about to say, <laughs> don't you go down that path. Don't you dare, Taylor. If you were a white woman, I advise you not to talk about your sexual practices. <laughs> okay, we do not want to know about it. Have respect for your boyfriend. No, don't even. I'm saying have respect. No. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> I'm saying, listen, yo, I fucks with your boyfriend, bro. I protect you. Do you know what I mean? From all these hooligans out here. These hooligans trying these to get hooligans a tailor? trying to get a tailor in the YouTube comments. Hoodlums? We just, <laughs> we just delete all those comments. We're not allowing it, bro. We're not allowing it. We're not going to allow you to build up all this self-esteem and leave your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We won't allow it, bro. We got you back. You know what I'm saying? It's fucked up, man. <laughs> Come on, yo. Get out of here. All these motherfuckers out here trying to Dr. Dre you. Right. <laughs> They're fucking YouTube comments, yo. Write that little letter. R write handwritten you. letters. Handwritten YouTube comments. <laughs> Taylor, what were we talking about? <laughs> Black, Black opinions, opinions matter, bro. B O M M. That's All the right. podcast. Let okay. Can we do like a micro version of it right now, where we give you a topic and you give an opinion? No, I'd rather they just. Go but maybe it. we'll give them a little taste. Okay. Why are there right. two M's? Uh, well, it used Black to, opinions matter movement used to come out on Mondays, oh. and then we had some shit happen. And now they come out on Tuesdays. So now the little the, bit, little lame. Second, <laughs> <laughs> second M. <laughs> second M says <laughs> motherfucker. So some shit happened. So what had happened was <laughs> is we was gonna put it out on Monday, but what had happened was we needed to get out. We're checking account. My Tell her account. what. <laughs> Tell her what. <laughs> Taylor, if you don't stop looking at me like that, Taylor. Taylor, you got those Africa earrings on. Oh, you don't know where Sudan is on those earrings. <laughs> All right, Black Opinions Matter podcast. Yes, okay, B -O -M -M. ready? Here's opinion. Opinion okay. number one. Right. White pussy, go. <laughs> Yo, my man got the water real fast. <laughs> to symbolize his thirst for white pussy. <laughs> It made him thirsty. He had to reach for the water. You know it. Because that white That's what pussy. Your wah, thirst. Yo, that white ass pussy. Tell us about that. <laughs> why? 
Tell us about that white <laughs> ass <laughs> pussy. The wettest pussy. The wettest pussy, bro. Tell us about it. <laughs> That's right. Keep drinking. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, like, you got to be so on, hydrated bro. by then. Come <laughs> on, dogs. What's that white ass pussy like? Real talk. B O M M, wherever you get podcasts <laughs> available. Is that what you're going to tell them where, what it's about and what it's like? We have five different shows. Five different shows? Yeah. Each one comes on a different day of the week. Mine is on Tuesdays. That's bomb. You have Crazy Sexy Cool, uh, which is three black women. What the fuck is going on right now? How you get five podcasts in one, yo? Because it's a network, bro. Oh, what's the network? uh Bomb. B-O-M-M. Oh, what does that stand for? Black Opinions Matter, motherfucker. Is it really? The, yeah. The yeah. last is motherfucker? It, it used to be Monday, and now it's motherfucker. <laughs> it's flavoring too, like the... Like, how does this work? <laughs> Son, we all know. Yo, 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 I kind of feel, yo, we out here on our own. No, yeah, ask whatever you want. We're open with our business practices, unlike some. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, but, it feels good to be your own boss, doesn't it? It does feel good to be your yeah, own you boss. You don't have to worry about should no, try it. You know what I'm saying? And like, for here. real, like your own boss, not like you say your own boss, but then you always got no, the but boss. But like, you've mastered the thing that I think a lot of people wanted to master, which is, I call it the Gilbert Arenas. Ooh. When, when you have nobody- Divorce. Nobody <laughs> to answer to. Correct. Yes. Nobody to answer to. Correct. You could say whatever, and if people get upset, it's like they can't cancel you because I'm uncancelable. Well, I wouldn't say that. I just uh, <laughs> he cleared it up real quick. I wouldn't say that all that. Uh, <laughs> no, but I would say like my people can cancel me. Your pe- yes, but you can only be canceled by your people. But your people are already bought into the Andrew Schultz experience. Exactly. So if I am fraudulent in being myself, exactly, then they could be upset. At yes. Me. So the. The only thing that I have to continue doing is being myself. Yep. And Akash got to continue to being himself. That that's why I, I literally say it every single day. Nah, Akash could get canceled. He, nah. might, he might. He might. He might be canceled. getting canceled. Nah, Andrew Schultz's experience is actually the next name of this podcast. So. We're in there. Remember that. Those two. Cinephobe. B O M M. Check it out. Okay. So check out. Cinephobe. Cinephobe. It keeps sounding like you're saying centerfold. Cinephobe. 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 And then the black opinions matter, motherfucker. B O M M. B O M M. Yes. Okay. Bomb. 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 I'm yes. not gonna make the no, joke. No, go ahead. I'm not making you the joke. Heat it up. I'm. I'm not making it. You threw it like Dwayne Wade and LeBron's running. Go ahead. I, I did. Different Muslim. This is the no clip Muslim. <laughs> I, by the way, <laughs> wait ne- a minute. Never understood that. Never understood the co- that concept. Wait this a is this is clinophobe. <laughs> 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 I got you. <laughs> Yo, son. Son. Son, that is a, you a wild boy. Okay, go, 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 go. Go, go. Real talk. What? Taylor, what? Hop up off your clit and ask your question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably going to make a dumb statement, but when you said that, it's okay. We won't judge you. Go for it, Taylor. It's okay. Why yo, Taylor is so fucking dope on flagrant too. Why yo. did you say it was in? Okay, in my head when you said it was the they're the no clit whatever like that. I'm yeah. assuming yeah. you're saying like they don't shave their no uh, no, no, no. They, they shave, they shave too much. All right, <laughs> they shave a little too much. It's a little too close. They shave that shit right off. Yeah. They cut off the clips. <laughs> yo, why did you bring this up? We were talking about America being dope. Yeah. <laughs> Come Never on, brought yo. brought that up. Oh, oh. All the clips are intact. <laughs> Facts, though, man. Oh. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Would you change that about Sudan if you were a mayor? Oh, if I was mayor. Yes. <laughs> Do you think if you were a comptroller of Sudan? <laughs> yeah, if you if you were mayor of a city in Sudan, would you be like, no, we're not chopping off clay? It, it's it, it is technically illegal, but obviously. But the would law you get up in there? Like, would I enforce that shit? Yeah. Fuck yeah. And how would you do it? Mandatory clip checks. <laughs> <laughs> Pop the hood. <laughs> Son, oh, you gotta get, yo, you gotta get an inspection sticker. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Oh, oh my God. Now I need people to really subscribe <laughs> because I'm not going to have my More job. More of this content over at Bomb, yo. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Ah, oh, shit. Black opinions matter, motherfucker. Yes. Real talk. Yes, sir. Okay. How did we get to that? That was the first question that we asked you about. Okay. Next question for your black opinions matter. Right. Okay. Hmm. Let me get to it. <laughs> I would like your black opinion mm. on. Uh huh. Mm. I would like your specifically black opinion right. on uh-huh. on this one thing. Hmm. Can Eastern and Northeastern Africans okay. use the N-word? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> How did you know he was going to ask that? Because I just asked immediately. Did you know he's going there? No, but oh, okay. he's always thinking about the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't say it. Finally. So I don't say it. So I don't say it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say if you are black. Clarify why I'm asking the question though. Because people would just assume, well, if you're African, that means you're you're like, but there are places in Africa like Egypt, like Algeria, Mm. like Morocco, Morocco, Mm. Tunisia, where they don't look black. They They look more Arabic. Arabic. And white. A lot of them look white. Yes. Many of them look white. Fair skinned and straight hair and all that. Or Mm -hmm. they'll have a little bit curly hair. They look Mediterranean, right? If you look at people in Sicily or in Spain, they look a lot like that. Because there's been years of European influence in those regions. No, that's because that's the Arabs who came. Like the reason why Spaniards and Portuguese look the way they do is the because Moors went there. the Moors yeah. went there. I, I guess what I'm saying is like uh, the Roman Empire reached Egypt. Yeah. The Greek Empire reached, yeah, yeah, reached yeah, Egypt. Yeah. And like the uh, Spanish and like French. But the whole, the whole region, like you right. look at like Iraqis and, and Syrians, they all look like that. Right, right. So, right. So can they drop that I would sweet say N bomb? They cannot. <laughs> those those ones cannot. <laughs> they cannot. <laughs> they cannot. <laughs> North Africa can't. North Africa can't. No. Can but Sudan? South Africa. What? What? Uh, huh? <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I thought that uh, you said, Mark. I thought put your hair down in a bob. <laughs> put your hair down in a bob, Mark. Get your lickings. What? <laughs> Get your lickings. <laughs> Not the rim shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. When can you start saying the N word <laughs> in think, Africa? It starts at, so, it starts at Sudan. But North Sudan, no N word. No. South Sudan, drop it like it's hot. No, 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 because North Sudan, we're still black. There, there, there are. Are you f- black enough to say the N word, man? Fuck yeah. I don't know, dude. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Puerto Rican ass, don't. <laughs> yeah. Are you black enough to say the N word? Hey, hey. Step in here, bro. Hey. Step in here and let us know. Like, what's going on right now, right, Taylor? Taylor? Is Al black enough to say the N word? Only if you give him permission, real talk. <laughs> This is a pivotal moment. Yeah. Here. This is like the Supreme Taylor, Court. Because Taylor, whatever you Taylor. rule. What no, is he's just allowed to. I just think it was Ruth crazy Black that you. Ruth Black over here. <laughs> Can to give us the verdict? <laughs> <laughs> Ruth Blacker Ginsburg. You're Ruth Blacker Ginsburg. <laughs> anyway. All right, go. Taylor. I just feel like it's weird that you're saying that he can't when you're half. Oh shit. Oh, oh shit. shit. Oh shit. Okay. Oh, shit. Kick oh, shit. rocks. Or as they would say, a punishment. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. Because oh, he knows God. it. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what he did. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Why are you bro. Up like that? <laughs> because he knows what he did. <laughs> Can I just soul. make fun bad jokes? Do I have to? Do they have to be haymakers all the time? Yes. Can I be a father? <laughs> Can I become old? <laughs> Can't I age? <laughs> okay, go, go. Ah, no, that's all no I you you were gonna remark on the fact that he has a Black Opinions Matter podcast, and he's not even black. Bullshit. He just said Boulder Dash. If that isn't the fucking non-blackest shit I've ever heard. Um, okay. Can, will you allow him to be on the Black Opinions Matter podcast? Still? <laughs> will you allow, Taylor. Taylor, seriously, this is a big This verdict. is huge. <laughs> this is absolutely massive right now, yeah. for real. Does he need to abort his podcast? <laughs> um, who's Hold, your on. Other, Hold on. Who's your other co-host? My, other, my other co-hosts are all black, too. Like well, maybe they could Sudan? just cut no. a little piece of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just cut the, the best parts. 
<laughs> just got the fun parts. Just pop the hood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what? No, so, he's allowed to. He's allowed to. Yes. He's black enough. Yes. Okay, you get your black <laughs> Thank enough. Thank you. Bro? Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> Tell you want to be a guest on the podcast? Oh yeah. shit! What about Al? Can Al be a guest? Al could be a guest. There you go. Half the podcast, so we just have to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. Go check out Amin's podcast, man. I mean, we love you. I think you're fucking great. I think you're such a talent. Yeah. And I can't wait till you leave uh, uh, mainstream media. It's gonna be so fun. Yeah. You guys keep yo, man. <laughs> if you didn't have a family, uh huh. Would you go the independent route? If I if I didn't have a family, yes, I would. There's all types of risks I would take. Right? Exactly, like, you have a family, so there's responsibilities yeah. that you have to. So you have to you have to like maintain your enter your like enjoyment level within the confines of protecting these people, and that's a responsibility yeah. of things to do. Yeah, I mean that, and, and also like I want to be able. Yeah, I want to enjoy what I do. Like mm -hmm. I wish I could do what you guys do. Every that's why every time I'm in town, I always yeah. hit you up. I say I'm here if you guys need me because always, always. this is like an escape for me. But at the same time, if I weren't in that situation, would I try a lot of stuff? Yeah, but also would I succeed? I don't know. I think maybe sometimes it works the way it works because. I parachute in to things every four or five months. Mm. But, you know, it's a difference between being a sometimes person and then you guys are like, cut the cord, burn the boats, burn the bridges. We're gone. Mm -hmm. We're on the island. You're on the island, right? We're going to go home. So, yeah, exactly. So, I think, I, like, that's why I respect what you guys do. I told you, you know, for years now, you guys... <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, bro. I was trying to hold it into the end of your speech. But it's good, bro. Yo, fuck try, all y'all. Yeah, I tried fuck to make this it. Podcast yo. Yo. A black I opinion, you won't let him. That's why I got to make his own podcast. Nah, but dude, oh, I was really man. trying to hold it in. I snuck the first one out, Matt Q. How long were you holding it, bro? Say what? How long were you holding it? I, I was holding that thing since you started talking about that white girl pussy. It was so wet. <laughs> <laughs> Lathered up that you was slip sliding all up in it. And then you shut Chef's Yo. kissed it. <laughs> Remember? <Ripped> <laughs> anyway, man. Yo, check out Amin on all platforms, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're a moderator on Pornhub. <laughs> aren't, you, aren't you a moderator, bro? Aren't you a mod over I there? Do, I do enjoy reading the comments. You, you ever, do? You ever read the comments under the, the videos on Pornhub? Never once in my entire Dude, life. I'm telling you, next time, go. Just click comments. Okay. And it's just the weirdest stuff. because like what? Like, it'll be one guy who says, oh, my God, I would love to just fuck her in her ass, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, no yeah. matter what's happening. And then there's another guy who says, who has, like, actual critiques. Okay. Of, like, yeah, this one wasn't that good. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, lighting was off or, like, performance? Yeah, like, he's, like, he's giving, like, critiques of, like, the actual video and shit. <laughs> it, it's, you and get it, porn stars look at their comments like we do? Dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. I knew oh, a kid yeah. that used to do this. Like, Wait, what? He would comment. Uh, he was like a comment from Orlando. He would comment on porn, like videos on porn. Real or like to troll people. He would do like legit breakdowns. Like he would do cinephile for fucking yeah. Pornhub. Yeah. And break that shit down. And then porn stars started sending him <laughs> videos, being like, "Hey, can you review my video? Get out of here." He started doing like low key like porn reviews what? on Pornhub. That's so, white. That's white privilege, bro. <laughs> he's like a Dominican kid. So did he make money? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he did. There's What's a market, his name? Though. Can we follow him? Mike Almanzar. Yo, <laughs> shout out to Mike Almanzar, man. You the I, fucking truth. I probably have seen his comments. I enjoy your work, Mike, whoever you are. Because <laughs> like, I mean, it's fucking hilarious. I mean, I think you got to, we talked about this last time, about when you watch too much porn, Yeah. you reach a level where it's like, you're not even watching porn to jerk off or whatever. You're, you're watching porn for enjoyment. Like some porn makes me laugh. What? You, you never laugh. You never laugh when you watch. He porn. just watches Cobra Kai for that reason. Yeah, yeah. He he you gotta get into that. that Cobra Kai, man. No mercy, <laughs> strike first. <laughs> That's not good when it comes to porn. No, Fuck, you're right. <laughs> anyway, man. Uh, look, I mean, we're gonna get off on that incredibly awkward moment so that people judge you, but they will find more about you at the Black Opinions Matter, motherfucker Beyond podcast Women. network. Yep. Uh, they'll also find it at Cinephobe. Cinephobe. And, of course, all over ESPN. All over ESPN. There it is. I love you. We love you, Doug. I'm so grateful that you come on to our podcast and let us harass you. And uh, this is going to be one of the longest podcasts we've probably put out, but we got to do it. We got to. 
I just want to say thank you so much for coming on. I mean, I appreciate you. I love you. Uh, I think you're amazingly talented. And, and anytime you're in New York, please come by and hang out with us. And a uh, huge thank you to all of our listeners, Asshole Army. Thank you so much for, for being with us, spreading the word, uh, showing love. You know what I mean? We see you on the YouTube videos commenting. You know what I mean? We're out there creeping like a mean. We're not playing games, you know what I mean? <laughs> but for real, we appreciate it. And uh, look, you know that uh, if you're a listener to the show, you know that we got a Patreon episode dropping Friday. Every Friday, we put an episode out. You can go get that at patreon.com slash flagrant2. Unfiltered, unrelenting, the raw, the realest, the craziest, the shit that we absolutely cannot put out on a regular episode because they would try to cancel us in a fucking heartbeat and that's what I mean thought he was going to be on but uh, this wasn't the filtered one no <laughs> anyway man come fuck with us over there at uh, patreon.com slash flavor 2 man we appreciate y'all and uh, we'll see you later peace <laughs>